She has a very deep connection to the ocean. Ah. She wants to swim out in the sea and not come back. <laughs> but I want to be in the ocean. Megan, you can't breathe underwater. I don't care. <laughs> Breathing underwater is, uh... A definite must if you're going to live under the ocean. <laughs> it's a slight problem if you're trying to live in the ocean, you know, not being able to breathe. <laughs> yeah, so I was on Steam and I saw they had the Overlord video game franchise for like 75% off. <laughs> so I got... Two games in an expansion pack for like 20 bucks. <laughs> nice. So yeah, but, uh, yeah, that's what Ashley's been doing the entire two weeks. Sending out her minions to pillage and rape and burn things on the ground. <laughs> totally blows the Wii game that I had for Overlord out of the water. It certainly beats my, you know camping for a week. <laughs> well, you actually went outside and did stuff. I kind of <laughs> sat at home and played video games for two weeks. No, no. I managed to, to take all the cool parts of PSG and put them in like a tenth of a block of my campsite. <laughs> wow, that's awesome. I really didn't get exercise at all at PSG. It was like, walk across the street. There's my food. Walk across the street the other way. Oh, look, morning meeting. <laughs> Yeah, but you were at least were outside. I actually didn't really go outside too much, except for the beach. Hey, I want to be far- inside. You know what it's like trying to use a laptop when it's fucking raining? <laughs> <laughs> Somehow my armpits got sunburned. Not quite sure how that happened. <laughs> well, that's, that's, see, that's a, see, you got to learn a thing that all the people that go clothing optional figure out real quick. Parts of your body that never get sunburned, sunburn really, really, <laughs> really easily. Uh-huh. You got your scrotum with sunburn on it. That's got to suck. Every time you go to rub your balls. <laughs> <laughs> Can't have sex until it's healed. <laughs> Which makes significant other groups. You- <laughs> Sorry, I forgot. <laughs> You're the dumbass that had to be naked. <laughs> You're the dumbass that had to be naked. <laughs> Women that get their breasts all sunburned and stuff. If it gets cold in the room and their boobs brush against their shirt, it starts to hurt really bad. <laughs> but the beach did wonders for my toes. Like an amazing little pedicure. Started to sing after a while, so I'm like, I'm done in the beach now. It kind of hurts. <laughs> oh, that hurty. Well, at least there's something out of it. Mm-hmm. And the current, for some reason, helped my knee a lot. Like, my knee didn't hurt when I was at the shore at all. Weird. Yeah, it was. And it was very smelly at the beach. I was a little <laughs> overwhelmed by it. Oh, it smelled like seafood. Well, no shit, Ashley. It's where seafood lives. In the sea! <laughs> seafood. It lives in the sea. That's all right. You got me who who didn't set up uh his what do they fucking call it the rain part of the tent, and then it fucking poured that night. I'm like fuck, fuck shit. I totally <laughs> got drenched on in like four in the fucking morning. <laughs> Here's your wake up call. Not even sunrise yet. Welcome to the solstice festival with the fucking rain. <laughs> <laughs> it rained and then it rained and then it rained some more. Half a camp was, yeah, was muddied out. Here too. Oh man. Well, then the naked people can roll in the mud. 
Yeah, we didn't and have to people how cold it was. <laughs> Oh, it was cold. Yeah, yeah. I, I was, I was thoroughly enjoying that part. Like <laughs> high seventy-two. Awesome. That's why I have my air conditioning set for. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Unfortunately, I did not know it was going to rain that night. <laughs> Had I known it's called weather like that, damage. I, I, I might have, I don't know. Is that the fucking rain tarp thing? <laughs> you mean the rain fly? That's what it is. A rain fly. <laughs> now I'm thinking it's so cool I can look out the top of my tent and see the stars. And nature's like, yeah, and that means I can just rain on your ass. <laughs> <laughs> the universe is teaching you a valuable lesson about camping. Always set up your rain fly. Make sure your fly is up at all times. <laughs> Meanwhile, I, w I didn't do it because I was just too fucking tired because, well, I hate air travel and it took us six hours to go fucking 20 miles. Wow. Oh, man, that was... So you had your little mini SS failboat excursion? Yeah, yeah, I had my SS failboat excursion. You know, as I'm looking around the little um, PSG shuttle, which turned out to be a minivan of some illegal taxi company they apparently hired. <laughs> you know, you got your taxi lane at the airport, you got your limo lane, and then you got your illegal taxi lane. He was in the illegal taxi <laughs> lane. I was like, well, son of a bitch. And here I am, you know, we're driving down the interstate at one point, and I noticed the two people in the back are texting, the person next to me is texting. I'm fiddling on my phone with Twitter, and then I look up the driver. And he's texting. I'm like, who the fuck is looking <laughs> on the road? <laughs> he has an autopilot. <laughs> yeah, our weather reports at, were totally like not accurate. We couldn't find an accurate weather report to save our lives at that fucking place. Oh wow! Not even NORAD. Earth, is it around weather.com, the National Weather Service. Nobody can figure out the weather over there. It's like, it's going to be hail and storm and everything. You wake up, it's bright and sunny, and the birds are fucking chirping. <laughs> bright and sunny, it's not going to rain. And that's like, crazy. Uh, Downpour. It's like, fucking hell. I can imagine the mad scramble to your laptop when it started ringing at four in the morning. <laughs> well, that was packed in a nylon bag at that point. I was okay. It's in a waterproof bag. But it's just, you know, when people are sitting in the middle of workshops and all of a sudden the, the sky opens up and just rain just falls. And everybody's <laughs> scrambling around camp because nobody knows, like, it was supposed to fucking rain, apparently. Adam wants to know where PSG was. Uh, it's in Earlville, Illinois. Actually, it's about 20 miles outside of Earlville, Illinois. The mailing address is Earlville. Um, it's about it's an, out, just outside of Aurora. So a little bit west of Chicago. Not that far. I mean, it's about a 90-minute drive from Chicago. Well, there you go, Adam. We should be recording. Yeah, we should just record this. We Fuck it. Fuck it. This is a trick. Yeah, it's it's going to have to be recorded. <laughs> okay, that's recording. That thing is still booting the fuck up. Boot, boot, I... boot. Everybody boot. <laughs> <laughs> I smell a fantastic dance single. Everybody <laughs> boot. Ah. <laughs> oh. So, so let's let's start from the top of, of PSG. Um, let's see. I, I I took my plane and I got there early. I knew I would get there early, and I knew I'd have to sit in the airport for a little bit. But you know how much of a pain in the ass it is when you got two huge bags full to the weight capacity. Yes, yeah, so I got a hot. I got two fifty pound bags plus the little wheelie thing, which also weighs fifty pounds, plus my carry on bag, which I swore also warped. Weighed 50 pounds. <laughs> Dear God, Dave. <laughs> you think I was going camping or something? <laughs> right? 
But I did manage to fit my tent inside of luggage. And that oh, wow. many people were amazed with. Well, my sleeping bag actually took up much more space than my tent. That's really crazy. Well, there's more stuffing in it. Yeah. So you had, like, collapsible poles or whatever, yeah, I guess? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, the, it's one of those new types. It's nice. It's got the stretchy, collapsible poles and everything. Held up to 60 mile an hour winds quite well. This thing got mm-hmm. thorough testing, so the first night I forgot to put my range fly up, so we got to see how well it can hold water. We <laughs> 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 well, all my luggage got drenched. Uh, I was... Oh, I was shit. happy that it was the first night because nothing was unpacked yet. So nothing had the opportunity to get wet. But the problem is, is that that mildew smell gets inside the luggage and I smelled like mildew for the rest of the week. <sighs> Adam wants to know if he can be in on the call, even though he's only 17. Yeah, sure. Let's drag his ass in here. Hello, hello. Hello? We don't hear it. Do you have your mute button on? Do you have a microphone, and is it plugged in? Do not feel weirded out. We have these problems all the time. (laughs) I can't say how many times I've had a full conversation, brilliant point, and my mute button was on. Yeah, we need to stop doing that. (laughs) Yeah. The light's only right next to my freaking face. Uh oh, I hear I hear noises now. Can y'all hear me now? We can hear you now. Yes. It w- would have helped if I had uh, plugged my microphone in, you know. Yeah, it's, it's, it's the Ashley method of troubleshooting. Is it plugged in? And is it turned on? Oh, Miles. The is answer on. was no in both cases, actually. <laughs> nice. Miles is going to be added into this conversation. He's going to have no clue what the hell he's doing here. Awesome. Yeah. I figured why not. (laughs) Why not? We're we're kinda low on people tonight. Oh, way to make it feel welcome. Well, there's nobody else around, so I guess you might as well just join the call. (laughs) That was that was pretty much my mindset actually. Come on, we all know nobody (laughs) listens to this show. (laughs) I listen all the time, I figured there's nobody here tonight. I'll show up. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Miles. I think Miles is having the same Is thought. your microphone plugged in? <laughs> and is it not on Can you put an <laughs> <laughs> See, Did you check experience- your Skype settings? <laughs> even the experienced people have these problems. <laughs> Is your sound card installed? <laughs> oh, you know, he had that weird headset thing going on a while ago where, like, he'd plug it in and then nobody would hear it and he had to, like, reboot his computer or something. Maybe that's what's going on. When Did I you was... beat it with a <laughs> Oh, that's... I mean, that's obviously the the thing to do. When I was uh, studying for my A+, we had this this evil testing program that insisted that the right option was to reinstall your copy of Windows, no matter what the problem was. <laughs> it, it, there was reinstall the operating system as an option for every single question. <laughs> My God. Hi, kids. Hey, it's a oh, I completely forgot it was Wednesday. That's I'm okay. sorry. That's I have you all marked those, in my phone. Are good drums? There's not many people here, are there? No, no, not tonight. Amber's we got have tend to call. Adam, she's a listener. Hello. Hmm? Hello. And Miles comes with a soundtrack tonight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, in the background. I'm sorry, yes, you can hear it, can't you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's very cheery and very British. <laughs> have a new and rather efficient headset. Wow, pick up the background noise from David Lance, I think it is. Cool. So, how was everyone? All right. Not bad. I had a dream up to you the other night. It was really weird. I'm sorry? I had a dream when you were in it the other night. Ah. 
Okay. You were making a dog behave for some reason. It was a very bad dog. And you made it listen for whatever it was doing. I don't know. <laughs> and that was it. <laughs> you were a dog trainer in my dream. I do have a rather misbehaving dog. Who is, well, misbehaving. <laughs> misbehaving dog. Wow. <laughs> misbehaving dog is misbehaving. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Internet. <laughs> I am a lol speak nightmare. Um, ah, goodness. Yay. Gardening is very dangerous. I'm sorry? Gardening is a very dangerous enterprise. The tiger it's lilies just located my kneecap two weeks ago. Actually, if you're a wee. Oh... It Do sucked a lot. How how does that I was, happen? I was climbing into my mom's raised flower bed. Dave, you know what it is. It's in front of the house. Mm-hmm. And I was just swinging my leg over. And my weight was on my right leg. And I had done this like a million times over the course of two days. But for some reason, my tendons decided, yeah, fuck it. <laughs> I don't want to work anymore. And there was a sickening crack noise, like, you know when you crack the joint of a chicken bone? Oh, it was that yes. noise. It was that one. And I stopped. <laughs> Fun. And I said, oh, fuck my knee. And my friends, Adam and Eric, they just ran over and like, oh, my God. I don't want to <laughs> move. It was so bad. <laughs> I had a really nice bruise on my other arm. I didn't even know it was there. You got two arms, you were born with them. You should have always known your arm was there. (laughs) (laughs) I've... I've been mostly aware of my proximities my entire life. Sorry, I'm being (laughs) obvious today. I'm not sure why. That's okay. Somebody needs to be obvious. (laughs) Obvious, Miles, is obvious. (laughs) <laughs> oh, <shut up. laughs> Sorry, I'm doing it again. Is this recording or is this just rather BSing? Uh, We're recording. It's, it's, it's somewhere in between. We're just recording the BSing. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> we figured there's going to be enough of a train wreck in here that we can post produce and actually have an hour long episode. <laughs> <laughs> Let's produce it under about about six and a half worthwhile minutes. I bet you can cut something together and make it into the semblance of an important episode. (laughs) You could. Make them think it's important. Dave will put dramatic music in the background and that'll be it. No, it's Miles that does the music. Miles does the music. Apparently I does the music. He's got his music. (laughs) Hey man, we had the first old pagan press conference. We were there. Oh, good. How oh, was cool. it? That was that was full of win. Which press was represented? Uh, we had um, it was PCP, which we yeah. posted it to pagan people. Right. Uh, Pathios dot com, uh, mm-hmm. which is now also Wild Hunt. Um. Huh? Yeah, uh, Pathios bought the Wild Hunt. I didn't know that. Yeah. That's good grief! Wow. If you go to Wild Hunt, it goes to Pathios now. Is Jason's? Yeah, Jason's still running. He's got full creative control over it, and uh, he can leave at any time. It's kind of cool. Oh, I see. So it's just owned by Pathios now. Yeah. Huh. Okay. So yeah, they were there. Uh, Star Frost was the one doing a recording. Um, Magic TV was there. I think it was uh, Reverend Don Lewis who did the videotaping of that. So there should be video of that press conference somewhere. Um, mm-hmm. Iris. Um, Iris from. Um, Firefly House. She was there doing uh, video recording. I think she sent the video over to uh, Capital Witch, which is uh, PNCDC. And um, Kara Schultz of PNC Minnesota was there doing a video recording as well. So it really oh, was cool. like a press conference. We had wow. like, video cameras and microphones everywhere in, in front of Patrick McCullough. That's awesome. Nice. Huh. The only well, thing is, is that I put my, my 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 recorder on the table, and and Patrick McCullough likes to pound the table when he's passionate about something. He, yes, oh, he geez. does. I've seen that. Bang, bang, bang. I will and be right has, back. Okay. He has emphasis. 
I, I just left it in because I think it was pretty good emphasis on certain things. <laughs> <laughs> sure. And then, then because then we had one press conference, obviously we had to have a second one. So Ed Hubbard decided to throw together a press conference real quick on Thursday. Nice. Okay. Something that we're still trying to figure out what the hell it is. Uh, actually, <laughs> he's uh, he's going to do a project sometime in 2012 where um, – Remember, it's it's basically everybody writes down the name of their path and a description of it, and then people get together to debate the descriptions of their different paths. And naturally, this press conference generated a lot of questions. Hmm. Yeah, I got. I'm going to post some new stuff. Try to get that out this weekend sometime. Analysis and <laughs> analysis and justification of what you follow and why you follow it. Kind of, sort of. I mean, it's more of a descriptive okay. thing. You know, a self-descriptive opt-in, and if you don't want to be known, don't fucking opt-in. It's really that yeah. simple. <laughs> <laughs> I missed the whole week. I was working so many hours. It was absurd. There's no way I... There's no way that I would have left work for that week, because... My job at work is essential, and I'm one of two people who can do what I do there, but the other one does not know as well as I do how to do what I do, and he has obligations of his own anyway. So I was so busy. I was working from like 5 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Friday and 5 a.m. to noon Saturday. There's no way I could have missed it. I have to go running off for a pagan festival. Uh, no. So, so, I was at work anyway. Oh, we still missed you. I missed me. <laughs> I'm <quite laughs> <sure> I <was laughs> me. But I'm glad you had fun. How was the weather? I heard it was rather traumatic. It was, it was raining. Uh, the first night I got there, I mm-hmm. put up my rain fly because I was too damn tired. That was a mistake. <laughs> I woke up to lots of rain on me. <laughs> yes. Yes. What day did you get there? Uh, I got there Sunday. Okay. Sunday yeah, um, uh, Iris recorded a whole podcast and everything while I was asleep, and I totally never knew it happened until I saw her <laughs> podcast pop up on my cell phone. <laughs> I was like... Wait, well, why wasn't I? Oh, yeah, I was sleeping. That's why I wasn't there for this. <laughs> he goes, quiet as everyone answers him. That's funny. <laughs> Everybody answers the chat room. <laughs> yeah. Oh, right. Guys, uh, it's a verbal medium. <laughs> How's the new location? The Interesting. What was stone um, best, it's called Stone something. Let's see. Uh, let me recap the the, the venue. Um, basically, it's the people there that own the place are amazingly friendly. They are great people. Absolutely, sure. they are they are really awesome, awesome people. Problem is, is that the biggest festival they probably ever ran was about mm-hmm. three hundred people. Yes, ah, she so, showed up with 960-something people. So this completely overwhelmed them. Yeah. Uh, Moonfeather Here's and Selena were Raptor basically Jesus. running the campground. Yes. They basically just said, no, this is what you're doing, because yeah. there's shit that needs to get done. It happens, it happens like this now. This is how you run a festival so, of this magnitude. Pay attention. The, the thing is, is that uh, the rumor mill is that Circle's really considering not using this location next year. Is even though these people are awesome, the venue worked pretty good. But the thing is, these people just weren't up to par with keeping you know the essentials right. good for a festival of a thousand people. They had, but, yes, but they are willing to learn, and that's you know I mean, we're trying to convince Circle, oh. hey, just tell, teach these people what they need to do because we think they're willing to do it. Yeah, I think it's just a matter of teaching them what they need to do, and these people are absolutely awesome. 
you know, does, yeah, does not the crazy amount of stuff like Camzo has. I think there's only like five or six people there, but I think they can do it. Does the land acreage have the capacity for a festival of our Here's size? The interesting thing. So what happens is is that they have a lot of acreage, but it's it's cut into like half ish by the creek. And it's not, and they're trying to build bridges so that they can use all the acreage for festivals, not just the half that we were using. Because I'd we're say. on half the land, PSG felt like a city this year rather than a town. It wasn't that you were crammed, but your neighbors were kind of close to you this year. This wasn't spread out like Zoe, where your nearest neighbor might be 200 feet away. Yes. I understand, okay. So, it, that made things really cool because everything was, like, really short walking distance, which was awesome. I like that. But at the same yeah. time, it also means you're really getting to know your neighbors, which is good in a way because it makes, you know, makes for more interaction. But it also... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we had cocktails at 2 p.m. every day at media camp. We made sure people started getting drunk early. <laughs> oh, nice! Some lubricant. <laughs> and and Kara can make some awesome drinks. She even made me a lot of, like, I didn't do the alcohol thing, but she made me a virgin version of her, uh, I think it's uh, elderberry something or other. Oh, my God. That oh, neat. <laughs> I don't know what the hell it is, but it tasted, like, awesome. But it you is... don't win cocktail. <laughs> But I, I, I like the land. A lot of people like the land. A lot of people like it. The only thing is is that I think it's, I don't know, one thing I didn't like was that main ritual area really could only fit about maybe two or 300 people. Really? It was not a big area that they used for main ritual. Now, there's big open fields that could, they could have used. They just didn't. Yeah. Hmm. Like Camp Zo, like that huge field we had was amazing because you could spiral in, you could spiral out, you can go in, you could go out throughout ritual, and it wasn't that big yeah, a deal a because place. it was freaking ginormous. But at the same time, here it was kind of cool because ritual space was in a grove. You were surrounded by trees, you kind of had that whole foliage thing overhead going on. It was kind of cool. Nice. Yeah. That sounds really pretty. It really was, and it was a, it was on a sand pit and everything. So even though it, like it rained, that was like the one part of camp that was downstream that didn't get mudded out <laughs> because it was a giant <laughs> sand pit. So, like, I really kind of liked it. It was it was different than Zoe. Yeah. A little, I wouldn't say cramped. It's just a lot more dense than we're used to for a PSG, but it worked out. The only thing is, is that the one thing I didn't like is that this is the first year we started having reports of theft. Really? That's, Are you serious? That, that's a new thing for PSG. Now, it is. A lot of stuff that disappeared wound up showing up again, but you know, one person's poi just kind of disappeared off the face of the earth and nobody ever found it. Poi? Yeah, it's uh, fire spinning tools. That's fucking ridiculous. Yeah. And we had. Uh, uh, why? Why would you steal poi? I don't know. It does. It's not even an expensive. Because you didn't steal. have one, and you wanted one, and he's got one, so you take his, and then you've got one. I why suppose it just steal anything. seems like a strange thing to steal. Yeah. Do you really want? Do you, like, even mm. if you don't believe in karma, do you really want the malintent of a thousand pagans on you? It's a rather obvious right? thing. <laughs> I mean, it's not like stealing somebody's car. This is a really personal, usually personal item that the user has put lots of magic into. So it's rather obvious, I should imagine, whose that is if it turns up again. And at pagan festivals, I've seen theft occur at pagan festivals in the past, but for enchanted or consecrated items that people steal, they often get really, really sick, or things turn strange for them in ways they can't explain mm -hmm. until they give it back. This happens. Like I said, you don't want to get the malintent of a thousand 
metaphysically capable pagans on you. <laughs> no, that's right. That, it just feels like a bad idea, yeah. You're very bad. I know. Hope you don't use it. You probably end up setting yourself on fire. <laughs> <laughs> I was just kind of thinking that, yeah. That would Something that dangerous. dangerous, I wouldn't want to risk the karma for stealing it. <laughs> that would be justice served. Yeah, it would. Well done. But the it's one thing I really liked was the store this year. The store this year was effing phenomenal. And this is like my oh, really? only thing for pushing for this, like keeping this venue. First of all, you know, like you always show up to PSG and you're always like, oh crap, I forgot something important. And the in and out is kind of restricted. So what these guys did, they took advantage of the limited in and out and they realized most people don't really want to effing drive anywhere anyway. So right. what they did is $5 delivery free or 25%. Um, whichever is more, um, they would go out and buy whatever the hell you want. They would go to oh, Walmart or whatever, they buy it, and then you come back, and then they bill you for it, and you pay them, and you get it. And that's lots, clever. And lots and lots and lots and lots of people took advantage of that. Like, it's that- like, it started out for, like, essentials, but then people, like, the end of the week were like, man, this is convenient. Screw it. Uh, get me, like, a case of Pepsi, and and. <laughs> 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 Hey, people were paying, and they were making money, and no, you know. Also, That's we have pizza idea. delivery at this PSG. Pizza delivery. Nice! Really? The sacred pizza. pizza. They had the, I was had this, uh, this pizza company that, that the campground apparently has good relations with. Uh-huh. Was, like, a few miles down the road. And once an hour, it was pizza running. They'd show up with, like, three or four people's pizza at the same time. You give them the, the, the tip, and you get paid for the pizza, and you've got pizza at PSG. <laughs> And the drivers, <laughs> and the and the drivers would love that too because it's all these freaks to drive in and give pizza to who are probably yeah. very cool people. Yeah. Oh yeah, awesome. the, the owners were really cool with us. Like they once they they, they really like the fact that you know again it's like every other PSG you know people respected the place. Um, well, yeah. I liked the store because they had a bathroom in there, and uh, not, right. they had nice bathroom facilities. It was it's uh, I'd say a lot better than Cam Zoe. Yes. They didn't have as many porta potties, but if you could make it to the main bathrooms, you were set. It was awesome. Hmm. Usable hot showers? Uh, I don't know if there was enough hot water to go around you. Ah, yes. Because there was shower lines for most, of, for much of the morning. Right. Well, I'll just jump in there. Really? Creek. If you're there for a week, why would you bother? Just smudge yourself to get the smell away. <laughs> just defunkify a little bit, and you're good. Yeah, you do a lot of smudging. <laughs> I mean, it's not like you're going indoors. Yeah. And if you're going to be in close quarters, deodorant. Deodorant is your perfume. Mm-hmm. Aluminum perfume. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> How big was the creek? Take it for Perfume. The creek was off limits. Um, oh, that's deodorant. no fun. But we had a swimming pond. Ooh, okay. The swimming pond was pretty big. Uh, I it didn't seem to get crowded, put it that way. Huh. Had a beach front and everything. It was cool. Even though it rained. Even though it rained. Well, the last couple of days it got hot, so... Then you cool. finally started seeing people go off to walk around naked again. And then it was <laughs> Naked people. Yeah. Ah, nothing wrong with that. I do that. <laughs> no, I do. It's rewarding. That's the wrong word. Rewarding. No, it's relaxing and invigorating. I think. I do, but this is me. <laughs> rewarding. Yeah, it's, um, I guess that depends on where you are. <laughs> that's, that's, Little kinky, not rewarding like oh score, look what I saw. No, um, it's personally rewarding in a in a in an inner peace Zen fulfillment kind of way. Spiritually like rewarding. Cathartic? I'm not sure if cathartic is the word. I suppose so. Um, it's just peaceful to me. Rejuvenating might be the good word. To me. So, so you might have <laughs> noticed on Twitter that we were saying lots of things about Jason Pitzel Waters on Twitter. There's a reason for that. 
Who who is that actually? The guy who runs the Wild Hunt blog. Jason oh, is. Gotcha. So what happened is he announced Pagan Media Camp at PSG, but he never ever said that he wasn't going to be there. So everybody assumed he was going to be there because he was at PSG last <laughs> year. So right. The first couple of days, we had to deal with lots of people asking where Jason was. So we decided, you know what? Screw it. We're going to get you and win him for this. We just started making <laughs> stories about him. I kept was doing that? naked no, it- yoga in the women's room or singing Lady Gaga at the talent show. That's yeah. what that was. <laughs> I was oh horrified. But it was funny like, because because we started getting Peter Diving, Selena Fox, Patrick and Colm all on this. <laughs> we getting the pagan elders involved, and they were the ones making up half the tweets. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Yeah, we had, um, uh, what was it called? Oh, man, I put it in the show notes, too. Some kind of dinner. Oh, symposia dinner. And I, d- I thought it was just, like, some formal thing that I just never knew about because I'm culturally unenlightened. I didn't realize it was actual, like, Hellenic religious practice. So, hmm. so it's actually kind of cool. It's, um, basically the way the meal is in contemporary uh, interpretations of the practice is that you know there is, it's a multiple course meal, and for every course there's a different host, and a host decides the topic of discussion. So the first That's course, interesting. Yeah, so every, like the first course, the first person uh, dictates the topic of discussion, and then when the second course is served, the second host dictates the course of discussion, so on and so forth down the line. And this start, this is like a, a we started at eight, we ended like half past midnight with this meal. This dinner just lasted freaking forever, but it was um, all of media camp. Uh, Selena Fox was there, Patrick McCollum was there, Dennis Carpenter, um, Peter, Peter Diving, um, Arthur Hines and Catherine Hines, um, Nels Lind. So cool. we, had, we, had the, we had like the who's who in the pagan community it's sitting at one table. Awesome. And, <laughs> I saw the picture. That was really cool. Yeah. <laughs> It was fun. We had some good discussion. The thing is, is that like not all of it was serious. So like, yeah, you know, yeah, we were making up things about Jason along the way during the dinner. Um, but one of them, <laughs> one of them was like, we got everybody to just make up a fake origin story for, for common pagan terms. <laughs> so it's kind of funny, you know, hearing Selena Fox sound at all kinds of serious when she's just making stuff up. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Yeah, the one uh, was, uh, it was a uh, pagan spirit gathering, the origin of pagan spirit gathering. 30 years ago, it was just called pagan gathering, and uh, they wanted to have something that, that kind of more captured the mood of it, and they figured, well, they were drinking spirits all day long, so we'll call it pagan spirit gathering. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if the wrong people are listening, they're going to believe that's actually the origin story. <laughs> if there was somebody overhearing Selena Fox describe things, he's like, <gasps> And you have cold popping up. Good job, guys. <laughs> okay, maybe that didn't do more of a disservice to the pagan community than anything. Um, no, it's kind of funny when you hear a person who's the, the considered the founder of a, of a, a fairly popular tradition ask, well, where the hell does the word athame come from? And then... <laughs> It goes around the table, and then you finally realize nobody really knows. <laughs> oh, shit. But, but the entomology goes back like tens of thousands of years, and it basically goes back to a group of words that means curved, cutting utensil. Okay. I have to run for a while, but I'll come back, I promise. Okay. I'm enjoying chatting in with you people, and I'll, and I'll, and I'll, hit, and I'll talk to you all again soon. Okay. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. Bye bye. But it was just cool just talking to these people. And because we were a media camp, everybody just stopped by. So I feel right now it's cool just talking to these people, man. <laughs> yeah, half the time we'd be like halfway through a conversation, like, damn, we should have recorded this. <laughs> <laughs> Patrick McCollum is going through the whole, you know, thing of. You know, a lot of people practice Wicca, but nobody knows why the hell we call quarters with the elements. And 
you know, that was his big thing. He's like, well, he teaches his workshop, and one of the things he covers is why do we call the quarters with the elements? You know, why do we call fire and earth and all that? And he, fi- he had a very eloquent way of explaining it, but basically what it boiled down to is if you take items that represent fire and air and earth and, and, and the other element, it shows you what kind of wicked I am. Um, <laughs> water? Water. And if you mix them together, <laughs> um, you know, you got fire heating up this mixture thing. Basically, what it boils down to is you get this really weird mixture that illuminates, that, that is, you know, giving off light, but the light of spirit. Um, so that's where that comes from in Wicca. But also, uh, allegedly, this mixture that, you know, you create winds up having the basic building blocks for most proteins. So I have to double check hmm. on that, but I think that's a cool story. Yeah. It's like, oh. Oh, this practice has some basis in reality. I thought people just pulled the shit out of their ass. <laughs> <laughs> Which is okay, because, you know, people get, Patrick was getting a kick out of how some people obsess over, well, North is Earth and blah, 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 blah. He's like, yeah, you know, I was there when we voted on this thing. We voted to change the directions of elements. <laughs> we all got together, we held a vote, and the vote was done, and that was it. <laughs> it's like, oh, it's like our little Council of Nicaea. <laughs> but yeah, Patrick is like a treasure trove of information. Um, he has like some information just showing you how far back witchcraft goes and goes back. He's got documented proof of it back in World War One at the end of World War One. And he's tried to show it to pagan academics, and the pagan academics are so busy trying to promote their theories, they won't accept it. It's like, but this contradicts my, my puzzle. Ah, uh, politics seep into everything these days. Yeah. But he's basically brought up the same point I always bring up is, this information is what all these really old people, and these old people are dying, and that is a problem. We need to preserve the knowledge somehow. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. I know Peter Darby's working on that, but and Patrick was actually pretty close to getting something together, but everybody just, you know, again, politics. Everybody's still bickering about politics of 20 years ago, and it's like, really? Really don't give two shits. Our next generation really doesn't give two shit about the old witch wars. Yeah. Yeah. We had a lot of cool presentations at Media Camp. I got to do a, a presentation on ethics. <laughs> oh, cool. How'd that go? It went pretty good. Now, if only the media people would listen to the fucking media ethics workshop. <laughs> <laughs> That's... Whatever do you mean, Dave? Oh, God. And we've kind of alluded to this on the, the Patheos blogs, and Stars kind of alluded to it, but that I'm not going to name names. But there is a certain group of people. <laughs> and it wasn't Witch School. Let me get that out of the way. It wasn't Witch School. It was another group of people that was, they believe it's their right to just plop down at a festival and record everything. And that's mm-hmm. not how PSG works. I mean, especially with video. Everything with video needs to be clear with Selena Fox and Dennis and Moonfeather and the lawyer and everybody. Yeah, you just don't plop down and record a fucking video at PSG. And these people were videotaping everything. Yeah. And they had no clearance for that. And Selena Fox... I didn't know this woman was capable of anger. <laughs> well, well. Yeah, so she got the lawyers on their butt and all that fun stuff. And, well, that's their problem, not mine. Um, and it's not Circle's problem. It's the media people's problem. And they'll deal with that, but... But, I mean, people got to know they can't be pushing around, especially with PSG, which is a festival for people that are in the closet. You know, it's not exclusively for people that are in the closet, but a lot of people there are in the closet. And these people just showing up videotaping everything. I mean, we got to fight hard enough to get audio recording, and these people just wandering around with video recorders everywhere. And, yeah, that pissed us off because we did a whole fucking media ethics workshop about this shit. Duh! Yeah. Yeah. 
I mean, I can understand if it was the usual suspects. I'd be like, ah, well, whatever. That's what they do. But no, was, they were pretty well behaved. I mean, as far as I've seen, they, you know, everybody kind of adhered to it with the exception of this one particular group, which had no involvement with media camp at all. No planning, no meetings, no, not even sitting in on, hey, this is what you should be doing, not be doing. They just kind of did their own thing and popped down and walked all over the place and... <laughs> I hate to be I hate to be a little off topic. Um, Ashley, when you were typing, you know, it gives you the little pencil thing with the dot dot dots. For some reason, the pencil like spazzed out, spun, and fell over. <laughs> nice. Skype has some of the weirdest issues I've ever seen. <laughs> Yeah, but aside from that one down note, everything was pretty good. Yep. I got to meet the Grimasis. They're good people, surprisingly. Oh, cool. Yeah. Patrick's still mulling over what his decision will be with uh, the legal stuff. So... Um... That's turning into an interesting situation. Patrick did disclose a lot to us behind the scenes and off the record, which I won't mention since we're on the record right now, but there's a lot more to the story. And I'm glad that he got most of it out in the press conference. Because it was me sorting through what's on the record and off the record would be a pain in the ass. And he hit on the major points and people might be like, well, what about this little nuance? And well, he can't address that directly. At least not publicly at this time. So, that's why. Even though we had a lot of questions, uh, it was it seemed like softball. That's because, well, we kind of know the whole story and we're only reporting on part of it intentionally just because of there's repercussions for things that are set off the record and brought into the record. Right. What, uh, what was on the schedule for tonight? Oh, this is just going to be a PSG recap. It was supposed to have everybody here from media camp, and, well, nobody showed up. I think everybody seems to have forgotten that it was Wednesday. Well, Iris wants to finally like, spend some time with her boyfriend, which is awesome, um, because she's been away and doing crazy stuff for weeks on end, so she needs to spend time with her boyfriend, and I'm cool with that. Um, sure. Star is probably, like, just about collapsed. From all the work she's doing. <laughs> Kara has got a whole bunch of crap going on in the next eight days, so she probably is just crammed for time. Lori Dake, uh, I forget. Oh, no, I don't know what she's doing tonight, but whatever. Um, Amber's dealing with Carl. Scurve's got his own shit going on. So, yeah, everybody just like. <laughs> yeah. It happens, man. It's the perfect storm of everyone being unavailable. Oh, yeah. But which is really funny and ironic is I'm available when I'm normally not. <laughs> I actually was the first one here tonight. <laughs> <laughs> that never happens because Ashley is usually kicking things. But I'm only doing you? that for a little while yet. Why are you Because usually... I have kickboxing class. Oh. I was just picturing <laughs> you running around your apartment kicking things over. I'd... <laughs> Uh, I have something random about an upcoming episode okay. to say. Okay. You know the episode we're doing with uh, Emily Carlin with her book, Defense Against the Dark? Oh, yeah, that one. I love the book so much I bought a hard copy. Ooh. It's yeah. not a bad reference guide. The thing is, it's just um, I'm no, kinda, it's not. I'm kind of curious where some of her source material is because she doesn't cite all of her sources from what I can see. And some mm -hmm. of the stuff seems eerily similar to descriptions we've given on this show. I'm like, are we a cited source? Because <laughs> this would be ironic. <laughs> I just well, really love, like, all the... She doesn't assume that you know anything about magic. And she takes you step by step through things. And there's a bunch of rituals and techniques in here that I would use that I didn't know about before. Like witch bottles and mojos. And this is really fucking cool. There's a lot more of the advanced stuff in that book than I've seen in any other book as far as metaphysics, so I'm going to give a kudos on that one. And War Water. War Water is amazing. I got I to look that up. 
I've heard about War Water. What's the book? There's called? an entry in here. It is called Defense Against the Dark. We have a whole guide. episode about this book in a few weeks. Yes. Cool. And it has pictures too, and they're pretty pictures. They remind me of scary stories. Who was the girl who wrote it? Because all I have is Harry Potter wiki. <laughs> Emily Carlin. <laughs> Harry I know. Emily, yeah, Emily Carlin. Oh, yeah, I found it here. C A R L I N. It was just stacks of Harry Potter Defense Against the Dark Arts wiki stuff. And my boyfriend kept teasing me every time I'd read it. It's like, oh, so you read up on Harry Potter? Shut up, Adam. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I didn't make it through all the, the creatures section. I just got bored. Because I figured, you know what? That's just going to be a reference guide. Flip to part two. Ooh, metaphysics. <laughs> <laughs> this I can read. Horrornews.net has an article about it. Interesting. Interesting. I don't know. The, the website's pretty ridiculous looking. The header, <laughs> the header has a clown with razor blade fingers. What is going on? <laughs> My goodness. I was reading. Oh, Gut Wrench asked me a question about Jin. I'm trying to figure out what he needs to know, which raised the whole thing about the uh, Defense Against the Dark book. It says uh, an entry on Jin. Jin? Oh, Jin. I was like, Jin, as in genies. Yeah, I was like, what do you want I was, about yeah. alcohol? <laughs> <laughs> no, D Jin. <laughs> Oh, ouch. Author Emily Carlin has spent the better years of her life delving into things that only Harry Potter stories seem to inspire these days. As a dean of the Gray School of Wizardry, you can't help but wonder, is there any truth to this very abstract, controversial subject area that only seems a reality to those who claim to know witchcraft? I want to punch that person in the face and beat them with their own clown with razor blade fingers. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's a website for emo people. It, it looks. I linked. I linked to the article in the yeah. chat. It looks like. I don't a waste website. my bandwidth. <laughs> They're not cool enough to have people with razor blade fingers. <laughs> That's all cyberpunk stuff. Molly Millions would kick that clown's ass. <laughs> He also apparently has like worms in his eye socket or something. I don't. I don't really know. It's a zombie clown. Zombie. I clown. guess. I guess. Wow. <laughs> Boring zombie emo clown. Yep, that's a zombie emo clown. All right. Horribly photoshopped zombie emo clown. <laughs> and they used the same image in three pace, three spaces. Entirely visible at one time on their website, without even flipping it or anything. At least flip it. Tell us you're doing something. Maybe even do something crazy like inversion. <laughs> Polarize. Black and oh, white. Gosh. I don't even think these guys have Photoshop. It looks like they, uh... They do everything in MS Paint. Yeah. <laughs> they probably just got the whole fucking blog set up on, um... One of those sites where you get type in a code. It's like, uh, what yeah. are the generators? That's probably what I'm looking for. Blog generator. Yeah. Is it a name website? No, it's not. Uh, it's horrornews.net. 
Now let, hang on, let me look at the source code. This is like painful. No, it's just a really bad WordPress theme. <laughs> is it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oy. Uh, like, the razor blades don't even look like they'd make any sense. How are you going to hurt someone with razor, like straight razors stuck sideways on on your fingertips? That's not very scary. You can't even, like, wiggle your fingers in a creepy way because they'd whack against each other. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Maybe that's why his face is like- so angry. <laughs> <laughs> so angry! My weapons are not effective! He keeps cutting himself with his own razors whenever he, he wants to punch someone in the face. And really hurts himself. <laughs> he causes massive nerve damage. <laughs> you could really only hurt yourself with blades like that on your fingers. Oh, they have a they have a tab titled Vamps. Uh-huh. There's 5,031 people that have been lobotomized. <laughs> oh, 5,031 lobotomy patients like net. I'm done wasting my bandwidth now. You go away now. You go away you die. <laughs> Oh my gosh! I, I made the well. I'm bored. Clicking. You guys, heard... huh? What? What'd you click on, you silly man? I clicked on radio shows. It's listed as podcasts from hell. What they are? The, that's the the list is titled podcasts from hell. Mmm. A very silly part of hell where clowns run around with straight razor blades on stuck to their father fingers. Emo zombie clown. <laughs> okay, this can get off my screen now. <laughs> you go away, you die. <sighs> oh. So Sci-Fi has a new paranormal show on. It's called Haunted Collector. It seems really cool. This guy has a haunted museum in his house. And he does investigative paranormal stuff. And the, sometimes he runs across things that are haunted, like items. And if the client wants them removed, he takes them and puts them in his museum. Cool. Is it like yeah. a, a fiction? Or? No. This guy actually has oh, a cool. museum somewhere. Well, like, some of the stuff on... Apparently, he's like... Hmm? I, I was just... Some of the stuff on sci-fi is, like, the fiction, and then other stuff is the, like, more realistic, like, actual stuff. Yeah. It's, it's one of the reality, quote-unquote, shows, like Ghost Hunters. Cool. Reality shows. Even we can do them. <laughs> have, I, have either of you guys seen Paranormal State? Yes. I don't, I don't, I don't uh, know what to think about those kids. Neither do I, because they... I hear they have a story arc. Like, yeah. really, if you have a story arc, you're not a reality show. Yeah. But it's and so the, confusing, because they have Michelle Belanger, and she doesn't seem stupid. I don't the, think. I don't want to think. <laughs> they had people. that series of episodes where the main guy, what, Ryan or whatever, is, be, is being haunted by a demon, apparently. And it, it, like, messes with all their other, like, investigations. Like, halfway through, he'll just start freaking out about this demon. It's like, what are you doing? Huh. And there's a lot of shady shit. Like, there was this one thing where this girl was supposedly possessed by a demon. And it kept demanding the demon name itself. And so it started tracing stuff in the air. But it kind of wastes. You could really see what it was. And I think it was writing a sigil in the air. And it would have been nice to keep a close-up on the person she was doing so maybe I could discern something. Like it was in the Kia Solomon or something. Yeah. But, um, 
like the, the chip coffee's like it's a pentagram, and of course they zoom to token pagan girl. Mm-hmm. It's like dun dun dun, and I'm like seriously douchebag, really? I hate this show. You make me angry. <laughs> and they they always like they hang up crosses in the house and give them like the Saint Michael's or whatever medals. Mm-hmm. Or the and they're all hostile and about it. Like, you gotta go away. You go away right now. None of this. Well, maybe you should interact and talk to and maybe coexist with the spirit. Yeah, or like, fine. you know, maybe just ask him nicely. Hey, bro, can you, you know, stop, you know, bo- bothering us or something? It's like, no. here, we'll give you some cookies. Can you please shut the hell up now? <laughs> I will give I you three ghost it. cookies. You're get quiet. over it. <laughs> I want to see someone try to make a ghost cookie now. I guess you just have to smash the cookie. <laughs> the cookie is dead. <laughs> Did you ever see Ghost Adventures? That show is fun. They're the jackasses of paranormal investigation. What is it? Ghost Adventures. They're three guys that lock themselves into horribly haunted places and do all kinds of bad things to get the ghosts to do stupid things. <laughs> Like in Bobby Maggie's Music World, a terribly haunted place full of demons and evilness. And they're like, hey, come on, why don't you punch me in the face, you stupid loser? I'm like, oh god, you're gonna they die. They do a little of that on uh, Ghost Hunters, too. Yeah, but they're bad. Like, they threaten them. And there's Ghost. been a bunch of times where the one guy, Zach, gets possessed. Like, a one, he just wanders around. It's just three guys locked into a building in complete oh, darkness. Is. It's on the Travel Channel? Yeah, they're actually... It's really addicting. Huh. Like, there's this one island in Italy they went to. Like, they would ship plague victims on there during the bubonic plague. Pavelia. And <laughs> um, they just sent them there to die. And, like, huh. thousands upon thousands of people were just sent there, and then they died, and they burned the bodies. And they made an insane asylum on top. I don't know if you can hear my sister are, are you, screaming in the back. I was going to say, are you getting info from the background there? <laughs> yes, she uh, is in- interjecting her commentary. Oh, it's on yeah. Netflix. Add to instant queue, man. I have to laugh because I got Netflix and I don't think I've set my TV back to the normal... Because I have my Xbox hooked to it. I don't think I've watched actual normal TV in so long. You're not missing much. The only thing I watch on normal TV is Criminal Minds, NCIS, and that FBI Missing show. Was it Missing? Is it just simply called Missing? I don't know. I, I, <laughs> Insert I can't, drama here is I usually watch. I, I watch NCIS, and I watch uh, Bones. Yeah, but, Bones. How could I forget about Bones? Love Bones. Those are the only two that I actually like follow enough that I watch them on normal television. And I have a hard time going back because at this point, it, every time a commercial comes on, I'm like, "What? What happened? <laughs> Why what is commercial dentine? <laughs> <laughs> I, I end up like I love how our PSG episode turned. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> There's not enough people to stay on topic. <laughs> no, there isn't. We ran a to talk about... It's supposed to be PSG. What are we talking about? Paranormal shows. It starts with a P. <laughs> and that's how it relates to paganism. It starts with a P. We could, we could get the, uh, the guys... TV for, get the guys at the PSG store to pick us up some ghost cookies. <laughs> there we go. Now we've related it back to PSG for a little bit. You are having a PSG yes. season nine of Red vs. <laughs> Blue. <laughs> Fuck yeah! Oh my god, I haven't been keeping up with that season nine yet. Damn it! But season eight. I haven't, eight was I haven't seen anything since like season three. Season nine is a reboot of the series. You can just skip the rest of the seasons and go straight to nine. Oh seriously? Yeah. Epic. You could, but then you miss the whole thing where they actually growed it up and got a plot and can render their own stuff. <laughs> or you could just start with season you, nine. <laughs> then you see the amazing fight scene with Tex and everybody else, and the safety code. 
Actually, I can honestly say that the the last episode that I remember, like, that actually sticks in my mind, is, like, the new kid shows up and there's capture the flag and he sells the flag or whatever. Wow. That's That's like like episode episode three. (laughs) Is it really? That's, like, the last thing I... I know I've seen more episodes than that, but that's, like, the last thing I remember. You can't go through the whole time travel sequence yet. Episodes 49 through 51. Is, wait, is that when they... It's when Church goes back in time and screws everything up and makes everything the way it is. I think I have seen that. I don't I don't remember, because my red versus blue time is usually 3 in the morning, so... <laughs> Not a I whole lot of it... Actually, that's that's pretty much what happens. Get the DVD set, man. It is totally worth it. Yeah, I'm thinking yeah, about now. getting it myself. Now I'm kind of curious to do that. And they have their own building now, and they have jobs. And to think, it all started with them just, you know what? Let's make a movie on multiplayer in Halo. You know, the, a lot of stuff ends up that way. Like, uh, Minecraft, that game, like mm-hmm. it's like a multi-million dollar game now. And that started, I mean, the kid was just like, hey, let's make a game in Java. Interesting. Like, he just made this game. It's not even that good of a game, really. Like, I love it, don't get me wrong. But it's not... Is it Minecraft or Minesweeper? Minecraft. <laughs> okay. It's... How... How disconnected are you? <laughs> yeah, I'm playing Minesweeper. Yeah, Minecraft, game. Minecraft is a game written in the Java language that, uh... Okay. You, you go around and you break these blocks to collect materials mm-hmm. during the day, and then when it gets dark, you have to hopefully have collected enough materials to build yourself a shelter, because these things come out and try to kill you. <laughs> and the point is just trying to build a bigger, better house all the time. Awesome. And you, you can build, like, weapons and minecarts, and it gets all crazy. I can imagine that being very addictive. Yeah, it, it really is. I, I have, like, have been so certain games. And it's it's all it's kind of cool because the maps are randomly generated. So oh, as you man. walk out, you you can just keep walking, and it just keeps making more map. Interesting. It's it's fun. I just got here. I'm not sure what the conversation is, but I want one. We're talking about Minecraft. <laughs> you sure you still want one? Oh, where'd Miles get to? Oh, well. He what was it, Minecraft? With... Yeah, Minecraft. Yes. It's a game. Ah. Although I have had people try to tell me that it's not. Like, they, they're way serious about this game. Is there a Dave here? <laughs> I'm here. Greetings, Dave. Hey, Skirv. Skirv, Minecraft is not a game. Topic. I'm Adam. I just sort of showed up because there was nobody else here, so I showed up. <laughs> He's part of the C team? Yeah. <laughs> I'm kidding. You can be part of A today. All right. Uh, <laughs> when I was in, uh, went back to school, our teacher used to joke that me and my lab partner were, uh, or my lab partner and I were, were the B team. But uh, <laughs> the A team sort of let him down. <laughs> well, that's sad. We need to find something else to talk about that begins with the letter P and therefore can relate to paganism. Uh. Oh. I did Even homonyms would count at this point. <laughs> so, did anybody show up? Ashley showed you up. You see. If, yeah. I was yeah, first and Miles, here. Miles was here for a while, and then he took off. Alrighty. Yeah, we almost well, had enough material to piece together a half-hour episode. <laughs> so, well, since I've never met Mr. Adam here... Yeah. Neither are we in- until right now. I'm going to interrogate him. Alright. Uh-oh, here we go. I, I, want this to be, I want this to be a bonus episode. I do. I want to. I want to see this on the website. I'll be disappointed if it's not. Alrighty, scurvy interrogate. Scurvy interrogating a random, a random listener. All right, let's go. Alrighty, tell me about yourself. Do you have any siblings? 
I am an only child. I have a dog that I love and a cat that I kind of like sometimes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I want to tell you, you say those things around here. We know people that really love dogs a lot. A little too much. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going through a uh, issues like, right now. Please don't give me any visuals. <laughs> How do you think My mental feel? resources I know what he's are talking about. sufficiently. <laughs> Alrighty, so you're an only child. Are you yep. into paganism? Uh, sort of. Sort of? I, I'm learning. I'm learning. I'm Excellent. still in the learning stage. I'm 17, so. Excellent. I've still got time. A little so bit anyway. Think. Yeah, a little bit anyway. Oh, you never know. Yeah. Although there's been some interesting theories going around about uh, this upcoming year and the next one, so... Yeah, there has. We're all gonna die. <laughs> <laughs> Although, we've already had the, the big, uh, the one big scare there with the guy. It's gonna be the rapture or whatever. Oh, for the second one, my brother and I were definitely hitting up thrift stores and all that stuff. We're, we're leaving clothes and stuff lying around. I think I'm going to do that. that. <laughs> you kidding? I'm going to leave used underwear in and everything. You kidding? Nice. <laughs> but you know, Adam, the reason the rapture didn't happen is because Macho Man Randy Savage died in time to give Jesus an elbow drop, so he was out for the count. <laughs> That's why the rapture didn't happen. Oh, of course. I, I was actually, I had to laugh because there were... Here in uh, Maryland, I live in uh, Frederick, Maryland, and there were, like, a bunch of people who, like, quit their jobs and stuff so that they wouldn't, they, they, they didn't need their jobs anymore because it was the rashes. They, like, had their animals put down so they wouldn't be left without them. I was like, what are you That's right. doing? There's a guy in Florida who was an atheist. He said that he'd watch their animals for them for the rapture. You have to, have to pay him like a hundred bucks or something. And so a whole bunch of people gave him money and gave him their animals. That guy was laughing all the way to the bank. <laughs> ah, but now he has all the animals. <laughs> Alrighty. So what got you interested in paganism? I don't really know. I uh, I was sort of looking around online and stuff when I was younger and just sort of discovered it. And uh, tried to research it a bit, but found it rather difficult. So I ended up sort of giving up on it for a while. And then I came back to it and found you guys, and who've been a faithful follower for ever since the episode involving 4chan. Which oh I think God. hooked me on PCP, actually. So, and that's sort of where I am now. I've been researching online a bit, you know. By the way, congratulations on your first Out of Context Award on PCP. Oh? You're hooked on PCP, right? Oh. <laughs> Forward that All one right. to your parents. Right. Yeah. I'm <laughs> oh, sorry, I'd be wrong. Alrighty, so, so how, what, what type of studying are you doing? Uh... I don't know. I've been following a lot of the links that you guys gave on Twitter, actually, which sounds kind of funny. Uh, I've been looking around on Patheos, stuff like that, and just trying to learn what I can, I guess, and s sort of, I, I don't know, thinking about it myself is a big thing. I don't know if that's normal or not, but thinking about it myself is something I've been doing a lot, thinking about where... I sort of believe that kind of thing. Okay. <clears throat> hmm. Eddie Skirb's asking you because he needs some study tips. I, <laughs> actually, no. I, I, I think in my case, the biggest thing that helps out with uh, or causes me to keep leaning back that way is I'll study history. and I mean, hell, last time I was starting to... Uh, go through one of his phases again. I studied up on uh, Joan of Arc, and it's like, wow. By the way, that is a bit of history worth studying. Joan of Arc? Oh, hell yeah. 
I did Dude, history. She, I haven't really looked into her, though. You need to study her. She had a freaking attitude problem. When Wikipedia comes up, we know I turn around. Where should I study her? <laughs> oh, on a side note, uh, me and uh, me and Dave here discovered a pretty good uh, site for studying studying things like paganism. Here, you, here you go. I I gave you a link in the chat. Alrighty. So, uh, do you uh, do anything devotional? What? Sorry. Devotional towards the eighty? <laughs> or anti-devotional, considering the crowd we have here? <laughs> did Did you open the the link? No. <laughs> no, Stuart is the one who gives out the links. That's why he doesn't click on any of them. <laughs> no. I saw the link and I felt no reflex towards my hand. That means it's probably bad. <laughs> Are you Dave in the background trying not to laugh? Alrighty. So you going to college? Yeah, um... Going to community college first, and I'm going to Capital, which is a technology only school. But I'm going to be an awesome. engineer, and then I want to cut on dead folk once I. My retirement plan is that I want to become a medical examiner. I want to become a school Gosh, teacher be when ducky. I retire. <laughs> poor kids. You need to develop a British accent so you can be Ducky from NCIS. I do, you're right. I can do, I can do a little <laughs> bit of one. Not well, though. Alrighty. Mm -hmm. Uh, you asked me something, and I was cracking up about a link. Um, oh, anti-devotional. That's what I think. I yes, think or devotional. Oh, um, <laughs> I am. I'm not even totally sure what that means. So probably not. <laughs> you know, like praying to a deity, respect offerings, favors, uh -huh. tell them to go get bent. Uh, <laughs> sort, sort of, I guess. Um. Wow, I do involve myself in a lot of anti-devotional behavior, don't I? <laughs> I think Dave, I think Dave's on both sides of that fence, actually. It depends on how much they kick my ass. Yes. Belligerence is bad. <laughs> Alrighty. So what are your um, hobbies? In my my spare time, I like long walks on the beach. No, I like to. Uh, <laughs> I, I play uh, Warhammer, and I spend too much time on the computer. Hi, here, yeah. And I read a lot, a whole lot. Uh, awesome. I don't know. So basically, you're the next generation of pagan podcaster. Okay. Yeah. I, that's, uh, <laughs> I picked up Malifaux, actually, just recently, which is kind of fun. It's a, a smaller, like, skirmish model game. I like all the modeling games. And I just started, a, just started up with a uh, combat group, medieval, medieval combat history group, with the forging of the weapons and the beating of the other people and that kind of stuff. Awesome. They're like a breakaway private club from the SCA. Cool. Like a local local group. Hmm. So I have to ask: Are you involved in a twelve-step program? <laughs> mm, As no. Dave cackles from the background. No, we got we got feedback a while ago from an associate of my brother that our our, our podcast is pretty popular with a twelve-step programs in prison. We're not entirely sure how to feel about this. <laughs> Way to fucking blindside him, Scurvy. <laughs> no, I'm not. Alrighty. I was only half joking of, on that one. Half of that was me googling, actually, to make sure I was clear on the definition of 12 step. I mean, while I am addicted to BCP, I mean. Ah, that's why. People think it's about 
PCP. Yeah, people think your your podcast is all about the PCP. <laughs> oh my gosh, why is this still on my screen? <laughs> <laughs> it came back. Probably how it happened too. Someone was like twelve step PCP. Four uh-huh. knees is like haunting me now. That's kind of bad. So, I was on a YouTube today. Uh oh. And you know, of all of our YouTube videos, there is one that's got a lot of dislikes. You want to guess which one that is? Uh, is this a verb that became a noun? Yeah. Or a noun that became a verb? Yeah. I get those confused sometimes. Yeah, it's a noun that became a verb. Oh, okay. What is it? It's actually the the follow-up interview that's gotten all the dislikes. Because a lot of other people have also gotten spammed by her. And they're like, no, dislike. She is a digital effing spammer. Dislike. <laughs> All the people that <laughs> spammed are coming back onto that one YouTube post. <laughs> nice. Everything else you see, like all green bars, you know, everybody likes it. Or at least everybody just doesn't give a crap. In this one, you got a giant red bar. <laughs> dislike, 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 dislike. <laughs> We should sell autographed copies of that episode. <laughs> <It's> Kelly Raising. <laughs> oh, that was an awesome that was an awesome hate mail we got. It's Kelly Hazen. <laughs> and Amber and I responded within the hour. Yeah, you did. <laughs> Kelly Mays. I'll have you know that I was saying that for like a week after that happened. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Hey, Kelly Mays yourself. Yeah, we can sell t-shirts and everything like that. I got some of the weirdest looks <laughs> that week. Actually, come to think about it, should sell those t-shirts like PSG. They probably sell. It's Kelly Mason. <laughs> hey, it's tonight would buy them. <laughs> Go Kelly Maze yourself. <laughs> yeah, but will we get in trouble for using their name? She's a famous figure. So she's exempt from a lot of those protections. Yep. She's on Wikipedia, remember? <laughs> oh, so we can use her name to sell things and she does nothing she can do about it? Well, not using her image. Because that's what it is. It's actually her name. Yeah. Okay, whatever. You're smart. You figure it out. Yeah. I'm going to sit here and eat my ice cream. And, it's um, not no, 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 no. and you can't trademark a name. Like, you could trademark the winning, which I think Tar- Charlie Sheen has figured out how to do. <laughs> but, you can't, you can't, you know, it'd be like, I don't know. How do you pick a name of, like, go Barack Obama yourself. I mean, you can't stop that. Huh. That doesn't quite roll off the tongue, like, go Kelly Mays yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't I see why using her name would be illegal. I just wanted to make sure. Hmm. So there was a question. Oh, yeah, I have to ask this. What do you think of our post-production? You mean, like, what comes out our after... audio quality. Yeah. Oh, the audio quality? Mm-hmm. It's, uh, it's pretty good. I listen to it a lot um because i don't really have much of a life (laughs) and (laughs) that's not the only reason i listen but i listen live and then i listen again again showing that our target audience is full of people that are either in a captive audience and they can't listen to anything else or they just really don't want to Yeah, the audio audio quality is pretty good. Um, I was disappointed when you guys went for your clean rating on iTunes. I'll admit, but you know, yeah, I can see well, why. We 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 might have a musical retort to that later, but <laughs> I, I don't I don't think that, um no I think that episode is out with the the the, the, the best Star Spangled Banner. Is it now? I think, mm-hmm. it is. It, I think it's been out for a while. Either that or it's just about to be out. I remember post producing it. <laughs> you know, I was originally. 
<laughs> hey, you were totally against it. And I mean, originally... I said, screw it, we're going to do it. Well, Mika pissed me off, and I'm like, you know, I'm going to do this. And then someone said about the Hawaiian liberation. I'm like, well... That have been a song other than the Star Spangled Banner. I, well... I'm asking the question, so I better not. That's about how that went down. Then about a month later, what she pissed off Dave. <laughs> oh, uh, Lamika's language. Oh. Yeah. Especially when uh, we said, you know, Scarab's going to have to edit out all your cussing, and then she just went off into hyperdrive with her cussing. <laughs> he took it a little bit personally. <laughs> well, the one that got me was her uh, rant on uh, language and people's inability to use uh, uh, multi-syllable words. Although there was a certain irony in that. And that one, pe- <laughs> that one spot where that beep was like five seconds long, <laughs> she was actually cussing for the entirety of it. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I think when it's when it's that much, it takes away from the production. But when there's just a little bit of goofing off and stuff, and it gets that way, it's not too, yeah, not not that bad. Good about cutting it out because usually you don't even know we cuss. We just edit the word out, and the conversation flows yeah. just fine. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The only reason we really started, because we, we were still on that radio show, right? Like, we were on radio, so yeah, we had yeah, to we be were. clean. Yeah, but... Oh, uh, yeah. We pissed off D, I think. I, I don't know how, but uh, I'm going to try to get us a spot on a radio station in Wisconsin. Cool. Yep. Oh, we're not on that radio show anymore? No, but... The radio uh, station? We pissed somebody off? I don't know how the hell we pissed them off, but we might have. But... In any well, case, we talk about paganism. Yeah, yeah you, the, 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 the show block is called Pagan FM. <laughs> well, that's it's already got you voted out in Frederick. <laughs> I've been down. I haven't been down there. Actually, uh, Dave and I were down there. Well, we drove through there a while ago, Frederick, Maryland, I believe. Oh, Frederick. didn't we? Yeah, we did. That's where we broke down. Remember? Good old Fred. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did the, we miss the East Coast thing? East Coast thing is at the end of August. Okay. Yes. Because apparently was another one in this past June was the 25th of Solstice Celebration, I guess. It was a big heathen gathering. But, uh, like, oh, by the way, it's, it's soundbite from hell, it's Christianity, ring an endorsement from our uh, resident Satanist. Wait, what? Oh. <laughs> What? That was funny. <laughs> Our failed uh, satire episode, I accidentally ended up being a big proponent for Christianity. <laughs> <laughs> and I was being serious. <laughs> Alrighty. Yeah, that was to, funny. To back the uh, the Fred Neck label, for, uh, for the seniors... Their last day. They, uh, three of them got arrested for driving tractors down the highway. Wow. (laughs) Lovely. When you get out of high school, Adam, you run. You run far and you run fast and you do not stop until you find civilization. Oh, yes. (laughs) It's it's great because Google actually has a giant server farm. Like, in the basement of Frederick. <laughs> like, some rotting little stinkhole building. And there's just, like, nice. this little label in the window that says Google. And I researched it, and it's this giant Google server farm. Wow. Do they grow servers there? Oh, yes. <laughs> The biological ones run much much faster, you see. <laughs> Gotta give them the fertilizer and everything. <laughs> hmm. Okay, think, think, question, question. Scarif, is your goal to break down in every single town that we have listeners in? 
I am loyal through and through. I will not be broken. Dave's <laughs> trying to get me to tell him to go get fucked, yep. isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, at least you put a smile back on my face. <laughs> Get a new alternator yet for that thing? Nah, I'm <laughs> ordering a new one. <laughs> what? I want. Okay, I needed an alternator. I needed the an old alternator one. like two years ago. <laughs> Actually, it worked on the way like down and back originally. Barely. But Well, it suffered a little bit of damage. It working. Actually, that was the starter that was initially draining the battery, but that, well, yeah. Um, let's, just say, let's, just, let's just say if the starter didn't have an intermittent short in it initially, um, the vehicle would have had a few less problems. I, no, it didn't have an intermittent start on it initially. That was induced. I forgot. To be like plugging the world to the goddamn RV. <laughs> <laughs> I never saw a power inverter before. They were pulling out guys I never even heard of before. I have fried so many inverters. You probably saw Dave's tweet about my, uh, um. Yeah. <laughs> your four batteries plugged into your RV? <laughs> 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 we were doing reverse inversion firms. You got fucking power. <laughs> <laughs> I actually, burst of polarity. We need more power. <laughs> oh, actually, as much as I hate to say it, I mean, when the headlights were off, the ar the alternator actually was putting out sufficient power. But the problem with that was you had to have the had to have the headlights power, off. You mean the needle was on zero <laughs> instead of a negative number? It was slightly in the, it was slightly in the positive. Slightly in positive. So slight that I didn't see that positive from my seat. Parallax there. What can I say? Do you know the curtain? <laughs> I'm using that excuse in the future. What parallax there? The car is not empty. It's just your parallax. <laughs> Uh, parallax error is what you get when you're uh, reading the gauge that actually has a needle on it. If you move your head back and forth, it'll look like the uh, needle's at a different position. Yeah. But yeah, it wasn't putting out much juice. They've got a point there. Yeah, when well, you turn the headlights on, I went to like negative two. <laughs> <laughs> Keep in mind, it's supposed to be at plus 14 at just about all times. <laughs> Oh, Princess Meredith. Yeah, I had a spiritual she experience with that RV. It is apparently not female. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> She's a drag queen, then. <laughs> <coughs> yeah, How did you discern the car was not a female? Do you really want to ask that? <laughs> Dave, well, what did I tell you about talking like. to him? <laughs> he had a terrible relationship with <laughs> Although, actually, there was... I heard about this on a Dumbass of the Day. There was somebody on PCP who did have relations with an automobile. What? Oh, my word. <laughs> oh, God. I actually called that one out during the other Ken episode. I, was, I heard it that day, too. I was... Or the day before. Wow. I think it was that day. I do not have sexual relations with that vehicle. I just want to make that record clear. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. You guys, you guys should offer just... A, a section on your website that contains all the extra stuff that was cut out in... in we do. It's called PCP After Hours, and I've got a mountain of it to put together, so... <laughs> I want yeah, this I on the top sorta... of your... I will pay to see this <laughs> on the top of your list. I just sort of randomly, you know, 
throw stuff together when I got to do after hours. Dave's having sex with Scurvy's RV. <laughs> There's apparently a dude, so that means that Dave's gay with cars. <laughs> <laughs> But it's okay, I just thought it was a girl because the, the RV is really a drag queen. <laughs> Did I mention You're I normally fail at interviews? <laughs> I do not have sexual relations with that recreational vehicle. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. Hey, you a BJ, <laughs> Mr. Clinton. <laughs> My take on that deal still was as well, um, our president's cool enough to get a Hummer. Hurrah! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah! <laughs> well, I wasn't alive, or I wasn't aware for it, but I I don't see the big deal. <laughs> Yeah. I was in middle school listening to that on my Walkman when I heard about it. Hmm. We actually had people suspended in school for commenting on it. Wow. No, no, we're talking about political stuff. That's what our president's doing. Huh. <laughs> yeah, that didn't fly over very well. Probably a nice letter Clinton got about that one. You have any idea what my students are talking about because of you? <laughs> Actually, you know, come to think about it, that really would make someone feel like a schmuck. Yeah, it really would. Well, next time our president does something stupid, you can send that letter. <laughs> Uh, no, I'd rather not be put on a terror watch list and assassinated in my sleep. Yeah, really. I had enough guns pointed at me last year. Oh, boy. Why were guns pointed at you last year? Uh. Um. Paperwork errors? Can we call it that? I had a failure to get with the fucking program. Ah. So we'll leave it at that. I see. I almost walked onto Camp David one time. That was awkward. Oops. Uh, <laughs> how'd that go? <laughs> yeah, just about as well as you'd think it did. That was... I don't know who the idiot was who built a Boy Scout camp 200 feet down the mountain from Camp David, but <laughs> next time they the told me we're doing an... Ir- camp there for- I don't know, actually, but orienteering courses should not be on the uphill side of that camp. Yeah. Nice. Especially not when we don't know how to use the compass anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you have so motivation she- to succeed. <laughs> <laughs> I approve. <laughs> Pop quiz trivia. What do I do for a living? Interrogate new speakers on the podcast. <laughs> no, but if I got paid for that, that would be awesome. <laughs> I, I don't know, actually. He builds things. He builds things? Yeah. He builds yes. things? Cool. Yeah. What kind of yeah. things do you build? Missile launchers. Really? Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's... I, I think I might sort of kind of remember something about that. Yeah, I, I was, that was fun. I told... That's, Actually, remember when I showed Dave Karen the uh, picture of the shirt we gave out? They gave out for Employee Morale Day. Oh yeah, I remember that shirt. Employee Morale. Yeah. 
I, I can see why that, that job would need an employee morale day. <laughs> oh, hell, you kid. Most of the people I work with are, are anti-psychotics. Well, I mean, I was, I was going to have the, the statement there that I don't think that you are one of the people who would need the, uh, the morale day, but... Uh, no, I'm terrified to show up to those, you kidding? <laughs> With the morale day or work in general? Uh, actually, all of the above. <laughs> I mean, it's with a bunch of mad bombers. Well, a few weeks ago, and I know I shouldn't go about workplace rants, but this one's classic. It deserves a comic strip. Supervisor walks up to me now. Ashley, Dave, you've seen my build. So, comment on this after I say what my supervisor said. Supervisor walks up to me and says, I've had complaints that you've been hitting pe- I've had heard people complaining that you've been hitting them with hammers. We're going to have to ask you to stop. What? Now, with my build, if I hit someone with a hammer, what's the one thing they probably wouldn't be doing? Talking. <laughs> Talking about it, because they'd be dead. <laughs> <clears throat> Standing. <laughs> so. He'd be in a, they're drowning in their own puddle of their own blood. Yeah, so my, my supervisor's special. Which, when I, went, <laughs> when I told the union about it, they said, well, you know, Gephar, you should be used to this. Okay, what part of this makes this a fair and healthy workplace? <laughs> so they call the government. <clears throat> wow. Yeah, that's uh, that's real nice. Yeah, yeah. I actually, uh, he's he's. I'd be repeating and all that stuff, and I'd have to edit out later. So, but uh, but he's um, made an impression overseas before. We'll leave it at that. Yeah, oh God. wow. <laughs> On that note, I need to get the hell to bed since I actually have to work tomorrow. Have fun working. For the first time. I'm... Yeah, it's going to be weird. Try not to, like, well, they... die. <laughs> I'm going to try. I'm going to try not to kill my coworker. I'm going to see what personality she has. Alrighty. <clears throat> On Saturday. Make sure well, you have a nice night. I'll talk to you guys later. Hey. Awesome meeting you, Adam. Yeah, nice meeting you. Enjoy the rest of your Saturday. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Dave, actually, I just thought of a perfect prank to pull on Adam. Oh, dear. Oh, God. We should ask him to try to do a healing on Amber. Not right now. To do a what on what? What? Why? (laughs) How is that a prank? Last time I pondered it, my body just started randomly breaking for a month. Do a yeah, what on? so we should definitely <laughs> tell Adam to do that. Oh, scurvy. <laughs> Dave, good luck. I'll have you know that I've been very fond and very afraid of Amber since, like, the first show I listened to, so. Amber's awesome. No, I like her. She's She seems cool. The two times I've actually come and, and like, verbalized or been in the chat particularly actively, she was absent, though. Apparently, you're amber repellent. Apparently. <laughs> That's kind of cool, actually. I'm going now. Bye. Bye, bye. I'm almost never in a chat, but I have enough trouble paying attention to the words that are going on around me. And I really hate editing out my um, ADD. I listen and I lurk in the chat, but I seldom talk. And today I decided there were few enough people here that I would embarrass myself too bad. Don't worry, it's all recorded. Of course. Like I said, I, I want to I want to hear my voice at your website. That'll make me that'll make my day. <laughs> that'll make my life actually. Oh man. Well, Gotta be more optimistic than that. 
Dude, I dig this podcast though, man. Yeah. I've I've been uh, I've been chatting with all my favorite people online. The uh, the writer of A Softer World. I don't know if you've ever heard of it. Sounds vaguely familiar. It's a it's a web comic one liner type of thing, kind of grim humor. He also wrote an amazing book called uh, Bible Camp Blood Ca- Bible Camp Bloodbath. But um, he tweeted me, and my mind like exploded. So now I could meet like. Some famous, like, I don't know, famous person from TV or something, I'd be like, yo, what's up? But people I actually care about, like, that actually talk about things that interest me, I, like, spaz about most of the time. I... Actually, I don't really watch TV anymore. I, I don't so much. Yeah. The commercials bother me. Actually, you know, you're almost close enough to go to the East Coast thing. What uh, what East Coast thing? Up here in Pennsylvania. Dude, I was just up there. What uh, what is it? Uh, a whole bunch of hostage are getting together. I'm gonna show up and show show up with some gay furry porn for them. Oh, fabulous! <laughs> yeah. You asshole! That well, Dave deserves it, but. <laughs> <laughs> my, my friend was deeply disappointed because I was in uh, Pennsylvania and he wanted to take me to Anthrocon. Oh. I have never been happier to be in Pennsylvania. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Part of me wanted to go, but it was more to hang out with him than to go to Anthrocon. Ugh. How do I say this politely? They have some beautiful artwork, yes, but... Yeah. Why has it got to be naked? Why has it got to be furry? <laughs> <laughs> Why has it got to be both at the same time? <laughs> They're not. Neither of, of them are particularly awful separate, but when you put them together, it's just like, come on. Well, my issue with it is, and I was thinking about this, it's, it's more a taste issue. You know? You know, you know the deal where once is special, twice is cool, and 50,000 times is considered spam? Yeah. Yeah. That's... Yeah, I can see that. As you think about it, a lot of best stories I read growing up with Anthropomorphic, it's like, wow. Winnie the Pooh, stuff like that. I mean, that's... Yeah, but it wasn't like Winnie the Pooh having sex with a, a pot of honey. I don't know, you should have seen the way he used to look at Piglet, man. <laughs> Ruining childhoods, it's what I do. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> My childhood was obliterated when I found Slash B. <laughs> yeah, that'd probably do it. Oh, by the way, it's not a healthy place to go to anymore. It's very... It was a healthy place to go to at some point. <laughs> no, but now it's all the summer kids that are there. They made it even worse. I will say this much. The word on the street is Anonymous is considered a terrorist organization. They've always been considered a terrorist organization, though. To some extent, anyway. I will say this. The word on the street that Anonymous is considered a terrorist organization of note. Ah, okay. Well, because then there was, um... Uh, what's the other... Uh, Lulzsec, too. Yeah, but yeah. they say they're retired now. Well, their whole purpose was to make everyone else do their job for them. Because mm. they wanted to spark the interest and then take off. First thing uh, I did... Go ahead. So, uh, well, when the word anonymous comes up in a computer safety training, when you work on a federal installation, and, uh, yeah. Yeah. I already have a friend who's uh, in a bunch of trouble because he was hosting uh, WikiLeaks 
mirror and got himself in a bunch of trouble. That way they came and took all his stuff. See, Anonymous is... They put me in a predicament, you know? I mean, them and the whole Scientology I kind of approve of. But them and the whole WikiLeaks I kind of don't, you know? Yeah, I think part of the thing with Anonymous is that their whole deal is that they... They aren't an organization. They're entirely separate. They don't have a leader and they don't have any particular motives in mind, so anyone can go do something and say it's in the name of Anonymous and for the lulls. Yeah. And then you've got, you know, the people who who do go after legitimate things. They have legitimate reasons to do things, like going after Scientology. And from what I've seen, that that seems to be fairly well done in a at least legally gray way. And they try to keep it fairly legal and transparent. But um, then they, they do do this other stuff. Like bringing down um, the credit card companies after WikiLeaks, which failed miserably, by the way. All well, LulzSec just goes after soft targets. It's kind of their the MO. Yeah, they're just... They did it because it was funny. Would you like an interrogation technique? Sure. Or a tip? Sure. If you speak as though you know something about a subject, it's going to be assumed that you do know about the subject. And if you know about the subject, it's going to be assumed that you know about it due to involvement. Huh. I feel like you're playing mind games with me now. <laughs> Investigators are fundamentally very simple creatures. They <clears throat> exist to make connections. Don't uh, make their job easy for them. Right. So if you're ever asked anything about that, you know, I don't know. Yep. I'm not part of them anyway. See, the word anyway is bad there. Is it? Yes. Do you know what the word anyway tells me? Hmm. It tells me there's another way. It tells me you're involved in another way. I used to be. <laughs> See, I don't want to... It's just... That's one of those deals where if you were ever questioned about that, you know you don't know anything. Yep. Yeah. You're not going to call the cops on me, are you? No. Okay. <laughs> so, I realized that I've been looking at this this page about uh, Parallax Air on Wikipedia for, like, half an hour. Scrolling <laughs> up and down. And I haven't actually read anything. I've just been highlighting different portions of the text. Okay. I can teach you parallax error in about 10 seconds. Hold your finger up. Finger held. Okay. Line the tip of your finger up to the exact center of your monitor when you're closing one eye. Okay. Move your head a half an inch. Where's your finger? Oh, okay. It Yeah, it jumps. It doesn't jump, but it moves away from whatever I was initially looking at. Okay. They see Wikipedia. Sometimes their articles frighten me because they, here they are. They've got like sine p equals one au over d, where p is the parallax of one au. What? Too much. So I just highlight it. <laughs> and that will somehow make it easier to understand. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hoping that'll absorb it through osmosis in my highlight highlighting. <laughs> <clears throat> hey, Matt. You know, I really do fail at interviews. I need to do this more often. I need to just practice. What do you mean? Oh, I get all ADD. Oh, because you're interviewing me? Or were interviewing me? 
Yeah. And then he looks at a shiny object. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're going to have to edit that out. <laughs> <laughs> That's alright. I'm the one editing this. <laughs> Oh, the part where I said I was afraid to go into work? You can leave that there. Okay. I'll leave out the interrogation technique. Uh... <laughs> yeah, yeah, leave out the good. felonies tonight, so I'll have to edit those out. <laughs> uh, the, leave out the part where he, he proves that a man can fit three feet in their mouth. <laughs> what? <laughs> the, the, the phrase, I've got my foot in my mouth. Oh. I was saying you made me look like a dummy and I don't want it on your website. I don't care. <laughs> I can, I'm, I'm professional at making myself look like an idiot, so. And we'll uh, just edit out everything Jason Pitts of Water said. We've really. Just a potty mouth. <laughs> we really need to get Adam into podcasting. Hey, I, I can, I'll, I'll hang out. I don't have anything else you, to do with my life. <laughs> You know what I learned while post-producing myself? Hmm. Wow, that guy is a dumbass. Yeah. I... Hey. I, I, no, no, no. I don't mean it like that. Oh. That's not how I meant it. No, I just mean, yeah, I've, I, I already know I'm an idiot. Oh, dear. Where's my... There it is. So just out of morbid curiosity, have you listened to any of the Gary episodes? Mm, I don't think so. I'll be right back. I listen to whatever I... T- don't leave me alone with him! <laughs> no, I, listen, I listen to whatever my iTunes decides that my iPad needs to give me, which is strangely intermittent. Inter- you know what I mean. I can't say it. Intermittent, that word. Mm-hmm. Um, one of these days, my mom's going to look through my search history, and she's going to be really curious about the uh, phrase, I'm bleeding profusely. Yeah, women have a special attachment to that phrase. <laughs> I've read the, uh, I've read the reason it exists as your website, though. Under PCPisms, I've explored. I like your website. It's uh, it's got a nice organization to it, and it looks good too. Dave's the one to set that bad boy up. I'll tell him when he gets back because I do like it. Awesome. Oh, by the way, what is Oh My Gods? I saw that. That was a web comic. I think they took it offline. Oh. Uh. It was an awesome okay. comic. You guys are still linked to it, but it just opens in a... Couldn't find... <sighs> yeah, there's a Miles. There's a Miles? Yeah. I don't have him on my friends list, so I didn't see him. Ah. Or my contacts, or whatever it is. Whatever this darn thing is. Hmm. So you got a friend that wanted to take you to Anthrocon. Wow. Oh, yeah. He's actually a listener, sort of. He listens every once in a while, but not live. So what type of street reputation do we have? I'm just kind of curious about that. I haven't really heard much about you guys. Excellent. Nobody listens. Hold on a sec.
All right, sorry about that. My dad was going to bed. Ah. Um. Yeah, I haven't I haven't really heard a whole lot about you, except just what I've seen because I already dig the the podcast. But um. No, oh, can't can't blame me for your judgment. But there were a couple uh, of the. Uh, let me let me. Let me scroll down here. I believe that it says here, Baby Bats. Yeah, there were a couple of those talk about you guys at school. But they weren't fond of you, so... Really? What are your PCP-isms? They, they weren't. Tell them to send us some hate mail. I really need some. Oh, yeah. No, they were, they were, they were pretty, bad, pretty uh, intensely bad-mouthing you. I think it was you especially, because you have that thing... You, one of your episodes, you made a couple jokes about a Wiccan, and they were freaking out. You, you I made jokes. I think it was you who made jokes about the the ones who sit there complaining about the burning times and stuff. It might have been Amber as well. Wow. And they were they were like annoyed that you had you had uh, made fun of that. They were like freaking out. They they were doing the whole it's not a it's not a funny thing to joke about kind of deal. And I was like, really? That's what? Dude, tell him to send me some hate mail. Alright, yeah. I need it. Kid? <laughs> I thrive on negative feedback. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it, it gets interesting, because there's... There's a lot of those type of people <clears throat> at my school. And actually, that's, that's one thing about I've found out about podcasts and is or and anything is you don't get feedback huh. almost never because uh, if you're doing something right no one's going to tell you right and I guess if you're not really doing anything wrong then or if you're doing something wrong then uh, nobody really has the energy to uh... I think partially it's that but partially it's also the whole <clears throat> if you don't have anything nice, you better not say it at all. And if I send you an email saying you did something I didn't like, you're going to call me a troll. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's problematic to give feedback. Yeah, I'm... What feedback I have, I'll give. I mean... Real quick, I have this question for you. I'm scrolling down through our uh, our PCP-isms here. Czechos- Czechoslovakian, euphemism for... And there's this box here. Yes, there is an answer for it. What? What? What is it? I tried highlighting the box, but it didn't help. I I, I can't tell you. Is it in one of your episodes? This is going to blow my mind. Um, the information is there to figure it out. Yes, but I can't tell you. It's, it's, you know. Sometimes I think I get way too complicated, because here I am looking at the source code to the web page. Dave would approve. That's like the first thing I do when there's questions like that. I highlight it, and then I look at the source code. No, it's, uh, there's a reason for, um, but, uh, yeah, I learned the hard way, and I just can't, you know. Ah, okay. If I had to suffer, so is everybody else. It's not here. It's I not really the source code. Why? I really am an asshole. Wow. Hey, did I say, the baby bats say anything else good about me? Um, not, not a whole lot else. They were, it was more the, oh, he's such an idiot, I hate this guy. It wasn't anything particularly constructively negative. Okay. It was just kind of general name calling and immaturity, you know. Um. But no, I mean they. It's, it's not that doesn't make you a bad person in my eyes at all. <laughs> Uh, 
Oh, wow. Well. Hmm? I was really hoping. I was like, you know, man, wow, I, I might get some hate mail out of this. I'll, uh... It's, I mean, it's a little bit of a joke, but it's also a little bit of a... It's like an initiation I felt I haven't gone through yet, you know what I mean? What, not receiving any hate mail? Yeah. And we got Kara that gets death threats on a regular basis, and Star out a stalker, and I, I... You're... To me, the best, the best short definition for how you come across is the cuddly porcupine. <laughs> really? Yeah, wow. uh, so, something about you, it, it exudes a friendly hatred, almost. Like, even your mockery of things is... I don't want to say friendly, or, or, or fake, because it's not, but it's like... Not as offensive as it would be if somebody else had said it. Well, I did try to appreciate everything. Yeah, it, so. I think it, it comes across as more just scurvy being scurvy, I guess. Like, I don't know. And I'm not trying to make it sound negative, because it's not. I quite enjoy listening to you, actually. But, um... Yeah, that's... Cuddly Porcupine is the best way I can describe it. Actually, that's kind of neat. <laughs> oh, no wonder Dave puts up with me. <laughs> and of course, this is just my view. Don't hold me to that. I need a disclaimer here. Observations are observations. Any observation made is a relationship between both the observer, the observee, and the environment. Mm -hmm. So I guess it's more than just both. People tend to factor out the environment a lot. Yeah. People also factor out the relationship part, too, but hey. <laughs> Whole wave particle duality sort of blew, away, blew that away. <laughs> I want to hear the... Is there a raw copy of episode 86? Uh, sadly, no. Because I'd like to hear that sometime. That'd so be would I. Interesting. I can get you a raw copy of some of Gary talking. From a couple think of hard drives. Oh, hold on again. <laughs> Sorry. So how's Dave come across? Are you there? Man, where'd Dave go to?
Alrighty, that's all settled. Anything good? Uh, my mom was just going to bed. They go to bed in stages. I think it's just to interrupt me more times, you know? <laughs> yeah, I remember that. So how's uh, Dave come across? Dave? I don't know, because you and Amber are the two that I pay the most attention to. Um, wow, you really are a glutton for punishment. Let's see. Well, you two are the most intriguing to me. Really? I, I feel like I can learn the most from you guys, actually. Which, I'm not sure if that's positive or negative, but I do. I feel like I can learn the most from you two. Interesting. Dave comes across as... He, he's definitely knowledgeable, and he... He comes across as sort of the leader of the podcast, I guess. Like, he seems to... But, um... I don't know, there's no real strong... Emotional thing either way, really. With him, it's not... He's not particularly offensive. He's funny. He's... He's a pretty nice balance of everything. Alrighty. How about Miles? Miles? I haven't really heard a lot from... He seems absent in most of the podcasts I listen to. Um... Yeah, I accosted him a while ago. You what it? Accosted him. For what? Not being said present. you're going to podcast. Ah. Um, yeah. <clears throat> he, like I said, I haven't really heard a lot from him. Again, he seems knowledgeable. He's usually pretty quiet background, so he's not... I think that's the two big things, is that the reason, or the... You the you and Amber are the two that stick in my mind the most because you are so candid. I guess is the the word I want to. Uh, I'm not quite sure what word to use for you guys. You're hard to describe, but uh, I guess candid is the best way to to say it. Okay. And you're not <clears throat> overly offensive or anything. You're just there, and you guys aren't afraid to share your opinions on things. Well, Amber and I go under the pretense and nobody listens. I listen, but I like what you say, so it doesn't... Yeah. <laughs> it's a defense mechanism. Yeah. <laughs> you missed our conversation about ghost cookies. Anything good? We, we ended up deciding that... Uh, we have to smash cookies to make ghost cookies. And that was how we were going to uh, help people with hauntings. We were gonna give the we were gonna give the ghosts ghost cookies if they'd sit down and be quiet. We, that we were might actually work. Well we were discussing the different uh, the, the three main ghost shows, the ghost hunters, ghost adventures, and um, paranormal state. And we got onto the whole point about Paranormal State being very... Beat them over the head to get them out of this house kind of attitude. Which isn't always really necessary. Uh, have you ever seen... No, I don't watch TV. Yeah. I'm about the most unplugged person you'll find. I have sort of stopped watching TV. I watch Netflix, but... TV is just kind of... Uh, it's nothing good to watch anymore. Um, it's, getting there, yeah. Yeah. It's it's weird for me, because I just sort of hit that age. I'm, I'm 17 now, and I just sort of hit that age where there's things that I remember that kids who are younger than me don't. Yeah, and it's fun when that happens. Yeah, it's, it's a... It's an interesting experience. It's, talking about Pokemon Silver to some kid the other day, and he was like, oh, you mean Soul Silver? No. No, I mean the real Silver. And it's just, you know, that's weird. Some kid I was talking to didn't know what a VHS tape was. That was upsetting. Uh, that's always fun. Yeah. Remember Power Rangers? Dude, yeah. Back when I saw they... the pilot episode, and you know what I said? This show what? will never last. <laughs> Uh, it lasted. <laughs> yeah. It lasted, and la I have never seen something 
so dead and yet so beaten. Actually, I saw the first episode of that one, too. Of of what? Simpsons. Oh, yeah. I did not. I was never allowed to watch that show, actually. And I've just never really started watching The only episode I think I've seen is... Uh, Quoth, the, the one where the main guy, Bart, or whatever, does the, um, the rendition of, uh, the Raven. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? I think so. It's been a while since. We watched it in English class, because we were reading, uh, Edgar Allan Poe. So we watched it in English class, which was special. We've been abandoned. I wonder if it's... Is it still recording? No one, Dave, probably. He's going to get back and have a laugh about our conversations about him. (laughs) Oh, dear. Actually, you're probably just store the knowledge. Yeah. I mean, I'm totally willing to to give feedback on whatever... Actually, you're going to laugh when I say this, but the other day I was... Yesterday, I had to go take a training. Eight-hour course, all good. I'm sitting in there, and I'm listening to the instructor speak, and all of a sudden, my brain shifts to audio processing mode, and I'm actually seeing every non-word, every stutter, every pause. <laughs> I'm mapping out his rhythm. I'm like, wow, man, this guy's audio is almost unworkable. (laughs) So that was, wow. Yeah, that's... (laughs) I I have this issue. I'm going to have to see a therapist about this. I just, you know, just started driving because I'm 17, and I have this thing where every time I'm driving down the highway or whatever, I'll look out there, and I'll just see, I'll, I'll just picture it with, all the people gone, all the cars gone, just a couple by the side of the road, and just just me and a couple friends running down the highway with shotguns, shooting shambling zombies. It's not healthy. It's not. I watch too many uh, apocalypse-type shows. I would be interested in hearing about that. <laughs> if she was ever around when I was <laughs> hmm okay. Alrighty, your turn to ask questions. Oh gosh, I don't I don't know what to ask, man. I You think I do? I don't know. I don't know. I'm not you talk to people <laughs> Barely. I fail <laughs> at it. You kidding? I, secret I'm is lucky just, to leave secret my is room. accepting it's going to be a train wreck and just sort of going forward anyway. I'm lucky to leave my room. Um how about how about this? Do you have any um, any good places that I could uh, could sort of learn about the the different paths and like their actual beliefs? Because I have a hard time. I seem to hit this wall whenever I try to find information about like the actual <coughs> beliefs behind their path. Okay. How's your history? Mostly in some medieval renaissance and... So what they taught you in high school. Yeah. Although I have uh, done a little extra on the side about certain things, but... Okay. Mostly things like the Knights Templar. That not kind bad, of thing. not bad. Okay, I'd uh, probably recommend studying up on Greek history, Egyptian history, are uh, two good ones there. 
the uh, or pardon from from what I've learned so far, which is very very limited, and just judging by my own sort of inclinations, the two uh, the two paths that I was kind of interested in were uh, the Celtic and Egyptian. I don't know if they have any kind of special name, but that's Comatic? Yeah. Okay. For the Egyptian, uh, I would study upon the history, just because it is there. Right. Uh, audio courses tend to put a certain intimacy to it, and you have the instructor putting material in context. There are some good ones out there. <clears throat> Even some of them for free legally, too. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Did I say that? <laughs> I heard nothing. I didn't know. Uh, another good one to uh, study is strange as I'm going to say this. Study up on uh, India a bit. India? Yep. Or Egypt? It's a neighbor. Okay. It's one of those things where I'd say study up on the history just to have the context. Right. So a lot of the a lot of the modern beliefs are in the history. They are and they aren't. But when you're studying up on the religion, if you don't have the history, you're going to have that much less of the culture. Right. It's pretty much okay. teach you some of the language. All right. So you know the whole deal with the Egyptians and mummification and whole three parts to the soul and all that fun stuff? Yep. Okay. Which reminds me, I bought an uh, Egyptian Book of the Dead a while ago. Cool. Translation of it. That's But I haven't actually read it yet. Oh, um... Now last that, one, uh... Oh, sorry, what? Last one I read was, uh... Dowdy Chang, I believe it was. The last thing I've read that could be classified as pagan at all was probably... <sighs> the Mists of Avalon? Um, I don't know if it really counts, but... Hmm. Yeah. Uh, podcasts are actually a pretty decent source. As much as I hate to say it, now the caveat with podcasts is not all the information is right, but they put feeling in behind it. Sure. So that's yeah, that's uh, that's what I was thinking. I think actually that the mists of Avalon is one of the things that re-sparked my interest, though, which is kind of weird, I guess. But nothing weird about that. Because that's uh, have you have you read that? Nope. It's King Arthur's tale, but from Morgan Le Fay's perspective. Ah, uh, actually, I was reading up on. Uh or doing an audio course on uh, King Arthur a while ago. Cool. Although, if you want a fun audio course, I'll have to see if I can find a, my pause out in the car, so I'm not even got to go there, but the uh, one on Joan of Arc was given by a very feminist, biased instructor, and it's a hell of a lesson. Hmm. <laughs> I'd also recommend reading up on psychology as well. I'm taking psych next year at school, so that should be... Alrighty. But as far as popular sources go... I haven't... How do I say this? Every time I go to go buy one, 
say, at a place like Barnes & Noble, I go, um, no. <laughs> Actually, Amber is a better one to ask for that. Because for me, I get most of my stuff via historical study. So. Right. Miles, though, is a phenomenal source if you uh, want someone who's digested a lot of material. I have to ask him. He was supposed to be coming back, but... And who likes to talk and teach? Yeah. Miles was... He said he was going to come back, but he hasn't. <laughs> so here's one for you. A little bit of historical perspective, but... Do you know who the uh, Greeks stole a, lar- a nice chunk of their material from? Mm, no. The Egyptians. Really? Yep. Huh. Like our word uh, pyramid. It came from the Egyptian term for for a cake. Can't pronounce the word. I've seen it, but I can't pronounce it. Right. The priory or something like that. Because they make cakes for their athletes, and it looks kind of like the pyramids. Huh. And we know who stole the Egyptian stuff, right? Two Wait. many peoples. The... Or the uh, Greek stuff, my bad. Oh, the, the Romans. And? And... Yeah, I don't. I don't know the Romans. Islam. Uh, I'm not. I don't know a whole lot about the Islam culture. So, ah, uh, that's a little tidbit about Islam is they'll uh, say they have uh, a lot of revealed truth, which turned out to be true. Like the whole planets going around the sun and Earth going around, or the moon going around the Earth. I can't speak today. <laughs> Well, the Greeks figured a lot of that stuff out. Greeks figured out the Earth was round, old, probably about 1,000 B.C. <laughs> but then there was that thing called the Dark Ages. <laughs> yeah. So when the Roman Empire split in half and all that stuff, and you had the East and West, and Islam took over the East, they inherited the Greek knowledge, which, by the way, after the Dark Ages... Most of our Greek manuscripts came via Islam. Right, because a lot of the information was lost in the, the burning of the Great Library. It was lost all over the place. There were penalties for being a heretic, and earlier investigation technique I told you about is a legacy of that. Hmm. Oh, just a heuristics for the mode of thinking. Kind of scary, actually. Yeah. But that aside, then from one perspective, the Greeks gave it to the Romans, or was taken by the Romans, sort of all of the above. From the Romans diffused through Europe and then to us. So when you study a Greek mystical path, there are Egyptian influences in it. Right. But I don't know, yeah. You sh- or pardon? Uh, you can go ahead. But that's something you probably shouldn't point out to somebody from Nova Roma. <laughs> You, you had asked me earlier um, if I did any... Uh, oh, I know what I'm trying to say. I just don't know what how to put it into my mouth. Um, uh, you asked me earlier if I had done any, um, like, gifts or anything. I can't think of the word. It's too late at night. Devotional? Yeah. There we go. Um, I have put out, this is, this is a laughable one, I have put out, uh, milk in a saucer in the back, on the back porch. It's supposed to be good luck, and, uh, 
I don't know, the, the uh, Celtics I read used to do it because it was an offering to the, uh, the fairy folk who would uh, curdle the milk if you didn't. I don't know. Little don't things like that. that. Little things like that. Like I uh, said in chat, I'm sort of in the broom closet right now, so makes Actually, it difficult to... If you want a decent podcast to listen to, and feel free to disagree with her philosophy, but still a good vehicle of wisdom, if you can stay awake, Zencast. <laughs> Zencast? Yep. To the Google... Dot org, I guess. Uh, I'd just Google it. They got like a million episodes. Alrighty. Get the podcast on iTunes. So, that's downloading. Ah. Another good one to uh, study, just due to its antiquity, is... Uh, Judaism. Really? Well, do you study uh, Kabbalist or K- Kabbalah? Or Kabbalah? Yeah, Kabbalah. Or uh, just the history and philosophy of the faith itself? It's got an interesting backbone there. Yeah. Um... I started to learn about Kabbalah a while ago, but it was again I was I was younger, young and stupid, and just sort of I, I went through that phase. I think most most kids do, where it was more of a rebellious thing than anything else. But with me, like like I started in this whole the whole pagan area because I was like, yeah, my mom's a fundy Christian, and I need to do something that's not that. But then it kind of, I kind of like actually learned about it, and I was like, oh hey, this actually makes more sense than I thought it was going to. Maybe this is something I should actually learn more about. And then I sort of fell out of it just through the difficulties I was finding, hitting walls everywhere I was trying to turn, and then I found you guys. That made things a lot easier. So not easier, but... Very centric on taking the historical approach. Um... There are caveats with that. Sure. And some people just don't like doing it because it's really friggin' dry. But... I like history, so... It's... For me, that's the reference I use when it comes to anything. It's... I have a chunk of history, and I can relate it to that. Right. Uh... If you're just looking for something to teach you names, popular media is acceptable for that, but they tend to rape the lore. Right. So you know, I kind of like having something behind it, actually, with the history. So if you want something to uh, study to intentionally find the flaws in, yeah, popular media is pretty good for that. <laughs> It'll, it'll drive the lesson home. Yeah, I, I kind of feel like if I'm gonna, if I'm really gonna devote myself and learn this kind of thing, I do want to learn the the history behind it, definitely. Now, as far as the ritual and all that goes, for the Egyptians. They were good, phenomenal at writing some things down and terrible at others. I mean, you'll find a procedure for uh, mummifying an apis bull, but you won't find it for mummifying a person. Hmm. I mean, yeah, there's there procedures referenced in other writings. So with that, you can, const- you can reconstruct part of it, 
part of it uh, when they mummified that person a while ago, who died, by the way, first. But uh, when they mummified him, they found out that after so many days, the Egyptians said he'd go and cross their arms and all that. Well, they didn't do that. And the long and the short of it was that person got mummified with their arms straight down to their side. Huh. Ouch. <laughs> Just bit my lip. What'd you do that for? Oh, you know, I just... Just had to do it. Just something something was calling me. The higher powers were calling me to bite my lip. <sighs> they need to go fuck themselves. <laughs> uh, shouldn't listen to my advice on that. <laughs> Alrighty, your turn to ask questions. Ask another one. Ah... <sighs> Oh, goodness. Let's see here. I know you've talked about it in other, uh, in, in past podcasts, but what, what do you sort of follow, or just a uh, rough idea? So I was agnostic. I had my own. articulate this in general I believe the universe as a whole has an intelligence alright uh, I understand and accept that the particles that were made out of baryon type style particles the whole electrons and neutron daily bobs that we're used to only makes up about three or seven percent of the universe. So, that being said, there's a lot of room out there for what the fuck. Absolutely. Uh, as far as relationship to deity goes, I normally am pretty loath to even acknowledge their presence. Uh... The, uh, Pagan Pride Day in, uh, South Carolina, though. That was a bit of a joke there, but let's not go there. Oh. <laughs> uh, how do I say this? I've developed, uh, terms with a deity where going to leave it at that. <laughs> what, uh... Go ahead. Everybody always laughs at that part. I don't know. Leaving... Leaving the partially unanswered there leaves the mind to wander, I guess, so people tend to laugh at it. Yeah, I can see that. So, uh, what, what got you into the podcast, into this, this particular podcast, I guess, or, or for that matter, paganism in general? Uh, let's see, I wasn't exactly raised in a Judeo-Christian household, uh, earlier on I was into largely the whole mind over matter thing, paganism, they call it manifest and will, uh, kind of cool. I love me metaphysics, let's not go there. <laughs> um, and well, after that, I think what got me into this podcast was a bit of luck. I listen to me intuition. Hmm. 
I fully accept that my intuition isn't always there for my benefit. Some would call that the influence of a deity, but hey, yeah. works for me. Whatever you want to call it, right? I don't know. I have a bad habit of being pretty open to influence, actually. Not not from other people, but from my own existence, I guess. I'd, I tend to have this habit of when something comes up in my mind, I tend to really not think it all the way through before just jumping right into it. And uh, it's it's almost kind of served me well over over the the few years that I've been around. You're what seventeen? Yep. That's enough time for natural selection of taking a toll on you. So you gotta give yourself <laughs> some credit. <laughs> yeah, I I mean I don't look at the edge of a building and decide to jump off of it every day, but I. Uh, I have a habit of, you know, something will come up in my mind and I'll, I'll just roll with it before I really give it a thought. But it's, it's tended to, to kind of help me, like, for example, tonight with coming onto the show, I saw the fact that there were only a couple of people on there and normally I would have, or if I had let myself think about it, I would have, you know... Then I'll, uh, I don't want to embarrass myself. I don't want to say anything stupid. I like these guys. They seem really cool, but they might laugh at me. I might do something weird. I don't know. Um, so instead of letting myself think about it, I just jumped right into it. And it's turned out to be pretty cool. See, uh, you probably noticed that I'm intentionally avoiding talking about a few things, too. Yeah. Sorry I, about that. Yeah, I I generally will. It's it's not a big deal. I understand that there's things that you may not want to go into. That's totally cool. Actually, are we still broadcasting? Actually, I think we are. Hold on. Yeah. Join us live. I see, yes. Yep, we are. I think I heard a Dave. Is there a Dave here? He's probably taking an epic bowel movement. <laughs> It just shakes the room. The microphone falls off the table. That's, that's what we heard. Oh, don't worry. You'll get me back in post-production later. <laughs> Actually, yeah. My, Go ahead. My computer's got violated this, this past week with a computer virus. Ooh. I think I figured out its method of transfer, too. Hmm. I up Skype up on this uh, jackass's computer. As I needed, as I wanted to move some files back and forth, and well, you know, yeah, didn't have a thumb drive handy, so I said, "Fuck it, I'll just use Skype." <laughs> Whoops. Yeah, that didn't end very well. Yeah, I tend to be pretty paranoid when it comes to my computer. I'm one of those kids that, uh, if you get my password wrong more than three times, it collapses in on itself and commits suicide. Nice. Yeah, it'll, uh... It'll... clear the hard drive and rewrite it 27 times. If it's left alone after you've gotten the password wrong. So many times. Now, if you want to have some fun, I can tell you a mechanism that'll make that much more foolproof. Ooh, like what? Okay. Now you're going to need access to a USB. Easy enough. Okay, you're going to go buy a USB converter kit. Digital analog is just got to give you an output. Okay. Okay. Uh, actually, you can buy one for like 40 bucks on the internet. They're pretty cool. 
They're actually fun to play with. You you do some scripting, right? Yeah, a little bit. Okay, so uh, basically uh, USB to uh, blah. Basically, just put in one of those USB controller kits and Google and troll around. You'll find some. Actually, I assembled one a while ago. They're fun. Okay, now here's the def- now here. It's a degaussing mechanism. I use degaussing loosely. You're going to need a drill. Okay. I know. I love that tone of voice. It's the, the it's the worried but this curious was unexpected. Was... Yeah, battery yeah. operated. Battery operated would be better. Something twelve volt would be ideal. All right. Okay. Uh, non lithium, if possible. Actually, I only got a 120 in air tap off of it when it comes down to it. Okay. Okay, now, are you familiar with the magnets that are in hard drives? Absolutely. Okay. You're going to need a bunch of those. I have a, like, bucket full of them, so... Awesome. Now, what you're going to do is, you're going to need a post... With a flat, with a flat thing on it. So basically, you need a. The one I use is uh, off a caulking gun. Now you got that flat thing that pushes in the caulk and all that. Oh, I thought you meant post like like the thing that happens when you start up the computer. I was thoroughly confused. Yeah, but it's funny you should mention that. Okay. So what you need to do is dun 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 dun. dun. Use that USB controller to turn on a drill. I would recommend using a, 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 a relay as a buffer. Okay. Two right. relays. Two relays. You're good to go. So this way, if someone enters the password in multiple times the wrong way, it automatically turns on that drill. Now, the trouble with this setup as it is, is the drill is going to be close enough to your hard drive to decause it anyway. All right. So there's mechanical solutions. There's also electromagnetic solutions as well. Personally, I like using a drill setup like that for other uses because, well, it's effective. Sure. Hard drive wipe in five seconds. <laughs> I know. I mean, yeah. recoverable wipe too. So I mean, that's yeah. Pretty- that's. That's, um, yeah. <laughs> Might have to go ahead and do that. Actually, uh, you could probably look up the schematic for a Tesla coil and just wrap the uh, primary around a hard drive. That should probably do a pretty good job, too, especially if the drive's been oh. up. Yeah. I mean, you're probably not going to have recoverable hardware. Yeah. Um,. But off the power supply in your computer, I mean, you got some stoutness to work with in there. Yeah. So you probably have, what, 700 got, watt power supply in your computer? 600? Uh, I think it's actually a little bit higher than 700. Okay, I have a big so one. I have a, I have a big Alienware that doesn't have so much Alienware hardware left in it. So your 12-volt line should probably have 12 volts at, like, 30 amps, 50 amps, some shit like that. So, yeah, you'll... You'll have enough to push it. Oh, yeah. Which is... And, of course, I don't even do anything particularly illegal, so it's not that I'm really worried. It's just fun to do this kind of stuff. The security is... It's fun, and I'm too paranoid. Although, personally, to I'd figure out a way to make the drill method work. Probably if you can set up a couple servo... Set up a servo to lower... Or to uh, angle the drill into place be ideal... Because if someone's trying to hack your computer and all of a sudden it starts making that noise, they're probably going <laughs> yeah. to leave a poop stain on your chair. <laughs> it will cost you a chair, but... but... Are you kidding? That chair would go on my wall. <laughs> I would, like, save that chair. That'd be a commemorative trophy. Probably earn a special place in the FBI's heart with that. <laughs> um, 
I think the my my friend was working on one that uh, I don't I don't think he ever got it to work. I don't know how he was planning on getting it to work, but he had this idea because of the super ring on the Xbox 360 has this issue. Have you ever heard of the super ring? Ah, uh, where it overheats. Oh no 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 no! This is that's the red ring. The super ring oh. is where you're playing a game. And somebody bumps the Xbox, and just the tiniest tap will throw the game off balance, and it will scrape along the read right head, and leave a giant scratched ring all the way around the disc. Lovely. Oh yeah, I've ruined probably five or six games that way. But uh, my friend wanted to work out some way to make the read right head in the in the hard drive press against the discs. I didn't think it would work though, because it just wouldn't. <laughs> I don't know. It just didn't well, seem feasible to well, me. Hard drive needles, they generally rely on an air baron. Or they used to. Now I believe they're engineered sufficiently that they don't have to, but back in a day, you know what an air baron is? The electromagnetic magnet between the two. Okay. Get your, fi- get your finger and th- your index finger and thumb, put them lightly together. Put them to your lips and blow. You feel how it pushes apart? Yeah. That's an air baron. Huh. How did they rely on that? Drive spinning at like 32,000 RPM. Oh, so it would push the... Okay. That's why for the older drives, the uh, proper boot up and shutdown was so important because... Uh, unless it was doing that, it wouldn't land in, in the landing zone. Right. Newer drives are engineered to the point where that's not really needed anymore. Yeah, they're pretty uh, pretty fancy. Dude, I have so many of those magnets in my... I used to work at a, uh, a place that... They're uh, E-end, and they were an electronic recycling company. Where you take your computers and stuff there... And people who worked there, we would we would take apart the computer and put it in the various bins that it had to be in to be recycled. And I liked my job there because you you didn't get paid very well, but they turned their head when you happened to find a computer that had a bit more RAM than yours did, and you happened to find that RAM in your pocket half an hour later, completely <laughs> by accident. Of course, they would they would ignore that. So I have like a box full of hard drive magnets. Actually, uh, a nice high RPM drill, and you'll have yourself the degausser from hell. What? What is it? Get a, a drill that's got a, that's got a nice speed to it, and uh, epoxy some magnets to uh, a platform, like I said, mounted on the drill. You have yourself a, a hard drive wiper from hell. Yeah. Actually, that's not a bad idea. That's not a bad idea at all. Huh. Thirty seconds ought to do it. Well, I mean, that's, that's actually pretty close to the to the uh, actual hardware they use, which is just a degausser. Actually, uh, do you know what a degausser is? Uh, sort of. I know what it does. I don't know. What it it is alternates a uh, magnetic field back and forth to wipe the hardware. Uh, if you wanted to make a very primitive one for throwaway use... Okay. Thinking about this with what's available, uh, I'll wrap about half an inch, half an inch thickness wire around a hard drive in question. Right. And you'll need access to an AC, get the USB converter kit I said about earlier, and one relay. Stout relay. Something like a 10 amp uh, contacts on the relay should be good. So this way they entered a password in wrong three times. Make sure you do your script in so this way the uh, USB out on your computer will function when they're entering in the password. That's a, probably be a little bit problematic there. And uh, 
next thing they should know is they got a nuked hard drive. By the way, that will make noise, that will make heat, that might cause a fire. <laughs> that probably will cause a fire. Don't think I'm a poser. Have you ever read Death Note? Nope. I read like three books, and they were awful. But I did learn a cool trick. And I implemented this trick. Uh, you put a fake bottom in a drawer, and then you take a drill with a bit the size of a uh, pen inkwell, like an ink pen inkwell. The, the little tube that goes inside of it. And drill a hole in the bottom of the uh, drawer. That way, with the fake uh, fake bottom in it, there's no apparent handle or anything. Like, you don't see a handle on it. But you can stick a pen inkwell through the bottom of the drawer to lift it up far enough that you can pull it out. And, um... There's th this thing they do in Death Note, and I, th I thought it was kind of cool. So I uh, may or may not have happened to try to put one together. He got this little uh, vial of gasoline and hooked up two wires to it with a switch so <laughs> that there was a, a piece of uh, non-conductive material on the bottom of the uh, on the bottom of the wooden thing so that if you pulled it out without pushing something through the bottom first it would remove that non-conductive material the switch was on a spring that it would it would close when you lifted up the when you pulled the thing out from between the two points and it would ignite the gasoline if you put the pen through the bottom and pushed it out with that the pen would act as the uh, non-conductive material and prevent the switch from going off. So far, it's worked. Hmm. I like... It had a couple of weird little tricks like that. Like, um... When you shut your door, you fold a napkin and you put the napkin, like, in the door. In the, in the crack to the side of the door so that when you open the door, the napkin falls out. And, uh, then you also put a piece of pencil lead in the hinge. And when you open the door, the pencil lead will break and the napkin will fall out. And that serves two purposes. If someone like your mom or whatever does that, they will most likely ignore the piece of paper or pick it up and throw it away, the napkin. So if, it's, if the napkin's gone or ignored, then... Someone, you know, anyone could have opened your door, it's whatever. And if the napkin is still there, but the pencil lead is broken, then that indicates that someone who actually was paying a little bit of attention and didn't want to be detected picked up the napkin and put it back. Let me guess, last time you had an IQ test, 135 to 150. Leave me alone. <laughs> Something Probably like about that. I don't, I don't, one, I don't know. I'd say about 145. Why? What? I don't know. I don't, I don't like... Smart. What was it? What? Oh, I don't, I don't remember, but I know it was something like that. It was higher than normal. Even though I have straight C's. Yeah, it's normal. Let me guess. Phenomenal last minute performer? Oh yeah, my whole family is. Uh, I can read a three page essay two in the morning before class and still get a good grade on it. Something that might work is utilizing five hour energy drinks without caffeine and Gatorade. Because it can act on your dopamine uptake. Uh, downside is don't watch any horror movies. Otherwise, you'll be in an exceptional state of heightened awareness and watchfulness. Hmm. A.K.A. scared of shit. I, uh, I already take uh, meds for paranoia. <laughs> so. 
I guess they're just anti-anxiety. Well, actually, if you're on paranoia meds already, you should probably look at a, a career in troubleshooting. What do you mean? Why? Because the basis of troubleshooting is you're trying to figure out what's up with something, a.k.a. you're looking at minute clues and trying to put together a picture. True. So, I mean, heightened, the heightened state of watchfulness is actually pretty good for that. I'm, I'm fairly decent at troubleshooting, especially, ironically enough, for things that I don't even really know that much about. Well, troubleshooting techniques are very portable. Um, you can learn basic troubleshooting on a car, sit down, have somebody teach you absolute bare basics of a computer, and you've already got a framework of experimentation to figure out what's right or wrong. And so, yeah. well, symptom analysis, I mean, you, you'd think you'd have to scrap it, but, I mean, you have the mechanism of utilizing symptom analysis. and So it's... Yeah. Troubleshooting is troubleshooting. I've been troubleshooting since I was, like, 12. I mean, after a while, it all looks the same. Optics, hydraulics, whatever. I'm, I'm just starting to get into the into the lower levels with the electrical fields and stuff. I when I started in the computer sort of area, I was I learned first about operating systems and stuff like that, and then I went up and I've learned about all the networking and application layer stuff and then down through the network layers. Uh, I have my A plus, I am trying to get my C C N A and C Cent Okay. Certifications, but uh, are you diagnosed for OCD? Not so much, but mostly because my mom's OCD that I don't worry about stuff like that. But okay. when it comes to things like, I have OCD about certain things. I like things to be a certain way, and when they're not, I like to put them back in that way. I've always been good at taking things apart and putting them back together. He's, a, he's handling those Coke bottles with intent. What? A quote Dave said while we were uh, down there in the Outer Banks. We went shopping, and I'm funny. I'm very content-based, so. So I'm sitting there, and I look down, and I realized there was a, a, a content pattern with what I'd purchased. Because I had Coke and orange soda. And what was it? Coke. Starch soda? Yep, it was Coke, orange soda, chocolate, and cheese. And I realized something. There was a pattern flow there. Now, the orange soda had to go first because it wasn't like anything else but the orange, except the Coke. So the orange soda was arranged in a triangle because I had three of those. Coke was arranged in a square because I had four of those after the orange soda. Now, Coke and chocolate both have caffeine. So the chocolate could be after the Coke. And since chocolate and cheese both have milk in it, in theory, huh. cheese could be after the chocolate. So, yeah. Cool. I've, I've always been... Go ahead. Dave was looking at that. He's like, wow, he's handling that Coke bottle with intent. <laughs> yeah, I I like to put things right, I guess, is my, my personal OCD. Are you, you sound like you got a good engineer and troubleshooter personality. You might find yourself gravitating a bit more to the troubleshooting side. But really, if you're an engineer and troubleshoot, that's are both six of one, half dozen of the other. Yeah. And there's plenty of troubleshooting in engineering anyway, so you're good there. Oh yeah. Um. Yeah, I. Uh I just started getting into the electrical things and doing little projects that I could find. And one of the things I just put together, I discovered... Have you ever seen... Uh, oh, I don't... 
I don't remember his name. Lifehacker? Uh, no, I think I've seen some of his stuff. He did a tutorial on something, and I immediately ran out and did this. Um, you get a SpongeBob toy from McDonald's, one of the old little... There's, like, two buttons on it, and one records, and one plays back. Mm -hmm. And in its base form, without you recording anything, it makes a bunch of different SpongeBob sounds. And each time you press the play button, it plays a different one in a in a cycle. Well, you take it apart, and you can um, take the wires from the from the switch that sets it off the play button. And what I did was I went over to my friend my friend's house, and his mother distracted him while I got into his his car, which he's been bragging about non-stop since he got it and wired those into the fuses for the ignition on his car Whoa. so every time he started his car Spongebob would laugh at him and he was so frustrated and I finally had to tell him what it was because he was about to take it to the uh, auto shop to get it taken out and they had told him that it was going to cost him $300 to get it out and I was like, bro, bro, look, look, look. It's right here. All right. Here is the kit I use. K8055. K8055. USB. USB. Experiment interface board. Okay. Velman. Long and the short of it is to make digital analog converters actually pretty easy to actually get a talk to your computer's a bitch. Um, I decided it was worth spending 50 bucks to get the DLLs and, well, quite frankly, ordering the components individually and wiring them up. Well, it's an all day project. I could breadboard it, but, you know. <laughs> yeah. I think. Mean there was a point where I was tired of or not really tired of this but I, I wanted to understand why what I was doing with computers was working I think that's kind of what's got me interested more in the electronics field as well because I, I didn't I understood down to the level of of base assembly and then how that worked with binary but beyond that I was, I was pretty lost on to why how the computer could understand the text on my screen when all it was was circuits with electricity running through them. And I did some uh, research on that. Basic digital. Boolean yeah. algebra! <laughs> my introduction... Boolean. My introduction to Boolean was on um, Gary's Mod, a video game. You can use a, a add-on kit that's called uh, Wire Mod to use Boolean logic to program things in game. Nice. Forty-seven dollars online or sixty nearby. No, uh, Radio Shack yeah. sells it. Do you have any soldering experience? Oh yeah, I've resoldered my Xbox twice. Okay. Um. It'll solder up fairly easy then. They use uh, UK notation, so 15K resistor will be 10. It'll say 10K, then 5. Okay. So that's. At least, I think, at least that's what I call British notation, because. A lot of times when I see stuff that's assembled in the UK, I'll see it written like that. It probably has its own name. I don't know. Who knows? You know. All a matter of perspective. Yeah. <sighs> wow, how did it get to be 11 o'clock? But, uh... That's a fun kit to play with. It's actually got all the basics covered. It comes with the DLLs, sample programs, 
sample hmm. interface and all that, and uh, that's... Yeah, I might have to go ahead and pick one of those up. That's pretty cool. So if you're wanting to interface your computer with um, the real world, that'll do it. It is a little yeah. bit slow, though. So it's not instantaneous here. Talking... Say, I guess about five millisecond delay. If I had to eyeball it. Well, that's not too bad. Oh, dear. We had Juno Internet Provider until two years ago, so lag is something I'm okay with. I'm used to it. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> Actually, if you know what you're doing, you can use the analog output on that to uh, generate sound. Really? Yep. Huh. So, a USB headset... How that works is it converts digital to analog. Basically, amplitude just incremented up and down, kind of like steps. Okay. So, you just feed the <coughs> speaker the increments at the right interval, which it'll have programmed in there. You uh, ever bring up Audacity? Yeah. Okay. You know how it has bit rate and all that stuff, and, uh, shit. What was it, bit depth, what they call it now? I can't remember. I don't know. About, uh, like, 16-bit audio, 8-bit audio, and all that? Yeah. And how higher always sounds better? Mm-hmm. Yep. Huh. Let's see, where is that? Actually, the uh, microphones, the uh, USB microphones, actually have pretty good uh, analog digital converters in there. Because if they're capturing audio with any real fidelity, it means they're capturing up to 20, giga, or 20 uh, kilohertz, which means they're cycling along 40 kilohertz. Probably 30 some. Probably closer to 40, though. Most USB microphones I've heard actually have pretty decent high-end performance when it comes to the higher spectrum. Yeah. So, I got, uh, call a 50 kilohertz cycle, potentially. I got me one of those fancy turtle beaches. Ah, nice. So that right there should be some pretty good hardware to pirate. Yeah. Now, getting uh, cracking a driver open to... Uh, get that to work the way you want, good luck with that. I, I actually desperately want to learn how to write my own drivers because nowhere have I been able to find a, um, oh, what was that? A driver for the monitor on my laptop for Linux. Um, I wanted to run Backtrack Linux, the, uh, the infiltration testing Linux software, but, uh, it's useless to have on a desktop because it's not, that's not the point of the program. You need to be able to take it places with you. Just, uh, download VMware. Run it as a virtual. You can uh, mount a USB interface, and I think even with VMware Player, that's a, a really freaking good idea. <coughs> you can should be able to mount. Actually, yeah, you can mount a USB interface directly to the OS. You're good to go. Why in the world did I not think of? <laughs> oh dear. I really feel like I should have figured that out before now. Oh, well, thank you. You limit your exposure to your environment a lot, don't you? I guess. I, I don't know if I'm entirely clear on what you mean. Uh, you try not to get out? Eh. I get out, but I don't like to be... I, I'm a silent observer type. I get out, but I don't... I like to sit and watch people do things. I don't, uh... 
speaking of sitting and watch. Dave, you there? Guess not. I always feel like somebody's watching me. Anyway. Dave probably went to bed. Which means this is going to be recording all night. That won't be the first time for him. Oh, dear. Has he really done that before, left it record all night? Once or twice. <laughs> yeah, but, um... Yeah, I just tend to not... I, I get out and I do things. I ha There's a whole nother, a whole nother personality of me where... When I'm public, I get pretty crazy. I, I like to, uh... I like to go planking, actually. Planking? It's a form of, of personal embarrassment in an intentional sense. Where you go out and you find a public area. And you lay face down. And straighten your legs out as straight as they'll get. And the point is to attempt your... To maintain balance in that position while people photograph you. So, or, like, where one person photographs you. That way, uh, the people looking on are kind of curious about what you're doing, and you can... It's, like I said, a form of embarrassing yourself intentionally. And it's been described as parkour for lazy people. But, um... There's planking. I like to, I like to go out and do, like, pranks, I guess. Like, with the, uh... Five dollar bill on a on a string, or you sit you sit out with a uh, spring loaded string reel of uh, fishing line, and you put a five dollar bill on it, and then you wait for somebody to try to pick up the five, and you let go of the spring reel so that it sucks the five up. Um, That's rude. Yeah. Funny. But, you know, I'm, I'm I usually it. If they look offended or confused, I'm like, ha, look at what I did. And, like, explain to them that I had it on a reel. Last time somebody was ever seriously upset by it, I just gave them the five and they walked away. But, yeah. I don't know. I guess it depends on the situation. <laughs> hey, there's a squirt. Amber sister. She's a squirt. I see. Wow, what the hell did I say about Wicca and all that stuff? I got the baby bats going. I'm trying to figure this out. It must have been good. Uh, you had, uh... Oh, let me see if I can remember. It was one of the first episodes I ever saw. But you were you were talking about uh, a fluffy bunny culture and and uh, the uh, the people who don't don't learn about the religion before diving. Amber had made a comment about people trying to attempt energy works and stuff oh, without really, really knowing what they're doing, that kind of thing. But well, I'll be bluntly honest with you. I don't know near as much as I should. I love studying psychology and people, so it helps out. It helps out a bit for this. I care more about the social aspect. The person's path to the divine is their business. It's not my job. To, it's not my job to critique it unless they're being a douchebag. Yeah. Or it's real funny. <laughs> um. Oh. I'll, I'll look through the list and see which... Oh, gosh. It was it was one of my first episodes. It was before the 4chan one, I believe. Um, going back through the list here. Wow, my internet is really... Oh, torrents, never mind. It's killing amazing. Yeah, 
Yeah, what pisses me off, though, is people that can't think out of the box. Absolutely. Oh, well. Particular reason you brought it up? Eh, playing a video game. People are fucking idiots. <laughs> what game? Uh, this one, DDO. I like my free online games. They're cheap. I think it was in uh, Wicca Vampires and Ragnarok. Either that crazy or crazy stupid and naked people. I don't remember. Okay, I'm terrible with remembering episode names. 168 and 167. It they were the two episodes right before 4chan, the future of paganism. Yeah, I remember that one. Let's see. I'm surprised we didn't get arrested for that one. What, the 4chan one? Yeah. Oh man, that one was brilliant. That was the reason I, like, absolutely love this podcast. That was a thrilling episode. Especially because I spent far too much time on uh, 4chan when that happened, when that uh, episode was around. <laughs> I, I, it just it blew my mind, it did. I wonder how they reacted to it. The 4 channers? Yeah. I don't know, I wasn't really, uh... Didn't really pay much attention. I seldom pay much attention to what they say. But, um... Yeah, they, they don't tend to really react to many things anymore. Um... I think they burn out. Yeah. What was the... There was some comic I was reading. I don't remember what it was. It might have been XKCD. But, uh... It had a, a brilliant... Brilliant thing in it. I don't know if you were... If you ever were visiting 4chan when they were freaking out about how terrible Twilight was. Like, it had become a meme about how terrible Twilight was. Or they wanted it to, anyway. And there was a comic about how the best, uh... Best thing that Stephanie Meyer could have done in that situation was to write into her next book that uh, when Edward got home from his night with Bella, he logged on to 4chan, which is the darkest, coolest place on the internet. That would have been interesting if she would written that into her book. Did she? Or, did she? No, but it would have been brilliant. It was, it was a comic I was reading. I know there's she, something that got uh, a lot of... Uh Twilight Freaks on 4chan for a while, wasn't there? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. It might have been the comic, actually. I don't remember if it's XKCD or not. Yeah, here it is. It's in, uh... It's in chat. Clicking on a link. See how this goes. My links are fairly safe, generally. Why is Google Chrome installed on this machine? Not fond of Google Chrome.
What was that? That was me uh, humping the microphone real quick. Ah, okay. Those Twilight jokes just got you so hot, you know. You know what's gotten on my nerves lately? <laughs> what? Free to play, pay to enjoy games. Yeah, those are fun. I had the Spiral Knights, I think it's called. It's a it's a Steam game, and I, I boycott Steam. Why? Because they installed bad shit on my computer. They did. Well, if I have to log online to play my video game, which I'm not even sure is installed oh, on my machine, true. yeah, that is true. bad shit. That is kind of irritating. Um, I use Steam once in a while because there's a couple games I like to play that are only through Steam. But, um... Yeah, I don't know. Spiral Knights is fun, but you get a hundred energy when you start, and it'll it'll refill after twenty four hours. But if you don't buy energy, you only get like half an hour's gameplay out of a hundred energy. How about I demute the microphone before speaking? I was going to say, your are there, in, are there in-game ways of getting energy? Um, you can buy it, but with like in-game money. But the thing is that you pretty much have to have bought the starter pack and at least like two more sets of energy before you can get deep enough in the into the game to be able to make enough money to purchase it. The main way of making energy or making money is diving into this thing called the clockworks, which is the meat of the game, and collecting this this stuff, the, these crystals. Well, on 100 energy, I can usually collect three or four crystals, which gets you about 50, en- or 50 in-game money. It's called crowns. And, uh, when I was, um, when you sell, or when you look for energy on the market, it tends to be about 5,000 of the in-game crowns for 100 energy. Lovely. Oh, yeah. Well, I think that it is time for me to head off to bed. Yeah, it's getting about that time for me, too. But it has been a lovely chat, and you are a wealth of knowledge. Oh, my God, Uh, you poor bastard. You absolutely are. You absolutely are a wealth of knowledge. Um, 
I'm going to keep researching, and hopefully you guys will have me on your show again sometime. Alrighty. See you around. Add you to contacts? Absolutely. Wow. Whoa, what in the world? My computer just, like, spazzed and decided to play noises out of both my speakers, my headphones, and my plug-in speakers. But it only does it sometimes. Alright, I will see you around. And I shall catch you later. Alrighty. Catch you later, Dave.